Today I have lots of vintage Victorian inspired Chevy chic. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. All right, we're gonna start off with some beads that came from Dollar Tree, little pearl beads. We're gonna take some, this is my thrifted ribbon. It's like a lace ribbon that I got from Goodwill. It curves, which makes it a lot easier. And then I'm gonna take some of this tissue paper that I got at the thrift store, and a piece of cardstock paper. I'm gonna start folding this over. The idea is to get the shape of a, it's called a tussy mussy. Um, it's like a Victorian bouquet, only they had it in like a, um, a metal holder. We're gonna use paper to do ours, but it's the same idea. So it's a shabby chic Victorian thing. So you're gonna start off by making a cone with your paper. Then I'm just using some uh, scotch tape to hold this together. You're not gonna see it, it's gonna be underneath, so just whatever kind of tape you have will probably work there. Then I'm gonna trim the edge of one side to make sure that my cone is even. I'm gonna leave the back high. And then I'm going to start wrapping it with my tissue paper. I have no idea where this paper originally came from. It's, it's really pretty. It's got some Easter and Valentine's and just the entire springy love look, I think. So I'm gonna roll until we get to the edge of our cone up there. I'm just using a pen to mark where to cut. Gonna cut that off. I don't wanna double up on the paper because I, I want to be able to see my pictures. If you double up, it's gonna look kind of dark. So it stands out pretty nicely, the sheerness against this white paper. Then I'm just going to kind of tuck and fold and tape around the cone, but you gotta be very careful with this tissue because it will tear it. Um, you know, tissue paper will tear. Use whatever kind you can find, whatever kind you like. You could use a solid color, you can use polka dots or florals or um, anything that you like that you can find. And you could probably use some type of wrapping paper if you wanted. This is some double stick tape that I'm using to just gently hold these together while I'm working around this cone to make my shape. And I've, I've never done this before so this is kind of a a learning experience for me so you probably see me wrapping and rewrapping a few times but the end result is I think nice and um, so you just keep working with yours until you get it the way you want it to be I'm just trying to try to curl that and then press that down on the inside of the cone that's going to help hold the flowers once we get those in there. Now our cone is pretty much complete with paper and I'm going to use some of this glue stick to now finish the edges and make sure that there's no peeling on this cone. You could probably Mod Podge if that's something that interest you that you want to do but I didn't feel like it was necessary for this project for me personally. I'm going to take a little bit of this tape and reinforce the tip of this cone so that it does not tell tear. So that's all I'm doing just wrapping around there to make sure that it doesn't come off while I'm moving things around. Now we're going to make the collar for this or the trim and see how it curves so it's gonna very nicely lay on here. You could probably curve a regular ribbon around there if you wanted to, kind of pleating it or bunching it up or ruching it. But this was this was great. And this feels like um like a cotton fabric. It's pretty old. It was in a bag with some more 
uh, as some vintage sewing supplies when I found it, but this is the part that really interested me. I love these colors too, this peach and cream. It's really pretty together. So I'm just doubling this up and using a little bit of hot glue and protecting my fingers to make this little collar. I don't know the actual word for it. That's why I'm calling it a collar because it, it actually does look like a collar. Okay, and now it's gonna go all the way around this top edge. And it's a little bit long, but that's okay because I'm gonna trim that up in the end. So I will start in the back at the seam. This is the part that's not gonna be seen. I'm gonna start adding a little bit of glue and placing down my, my lace. I'm gonna follow this all the way around. Careful not to tear your paper. I don't think I can stress enough how fragile tissue paper is. You really have to be gentle with it. So keep going. Are you a fan of shabby chic? Do you like the Victorian or vintage look? And I guess when I say vintage, I mean way vintage. Late 1800s, early 1900s. It's a lot of charm, I think, in the, the pieces and in the decorations that go way back. Very romantic. Okay, so I'm going to trim off what I have left here. Make sure everything lays nice and flat so when we put the hanger on, we have no problems. Now I'm going to show you here how to make the florets or the roses that I'm going to use inside. I'm also going to use some flowers that came um, from Dollar Tree and that are thrifted. But these are going to be my focal point these two flowers that I make. So I'm cutting eight inch pieces of this curved lace. I'm going to cut some oval shapes out of some scrap paper. And that's what I'm gonna use as the base to set these florets or flowers on. I'm gonna start off with a generous amount of glue there and then twist in a circular pattern and pleat it as I'm going. So you just fold a little bit over and tack it down. Fold a little bit over and then tack it down. Keep moving in a circular pattern all the way around. And it's gonna give you this little pretty cup shape, which is like a flower. Now we're gonna start with the center of the flower. Same thing, start in the center, place your edge down and then we're just going to continue to add a dot of glue, turn, gather a little section, and then press it down. Protect your fingers because it's, you're, you can't see really what you're doing here. It's more of a, you're kind of feeling toward the center of the flower when you do it. You keep turning and you get the idea of this process intersection is going to be a little bit of a tighter shape and it's going to be a thicker one because you're using the same length but you're using a smaller amount of space if that makes sense. So be sure that you place your, you go all the way around with that glue and make sure that your ends are placed down. Now you can use a button in the center, It'd be very pretty or you can use beads and I've used these Dollar Tree beads on lots of projects and I am going to use those as the center for these flowers. Isn't that cute? So that's going to be my larger flower. Now if you want your flower to be tighter and smaller this is what you would do. You're going to do the same thing but you're going to make a lot more gathers and a lot more tacking with the glue all the way around. You see this one's a little tighter, like a flower that's not completely opened yet. Now 
then do your inner layer. Same as before. You getting the idea? And then we're going to give this one a center as well. So you see the two different sizes? I'm going to take this floral stem that I used the flowers from another project. And I'm going to use those as the stem for this project. Simple, simple. Put those where you want them. Then we're going to use a piece of that cardstock I had left, a little scrap paper, and put that over the top to hold it in place and make it look a little prettier. And there you have it. Give those a second to set up and then choose your flowers that you want to use. I'm going to use this. It's a, I don't know what it came off of, but it's a, a pick or a stem or a, a dowel of some sort. I'm going to use floral wire to lift up these roses so that they are higher up and they don't sink down into the bottom. So I'm wrapping it and then I'm going to take some of my tape, my floral tape. You know it's waxed. You give it a little bit of pressure and then it releases the stickiness and you just twist all the way around. That's going to cover up my wire so it doesn't tear any of my tissue and it gives it a prettier look. See, it fits right down in there without going through the tip, which we secured. Here are my handmade flowers, and then I'm going to add one more flower in the side. I think the cream and the peach are really pretty. We're going to make the backing now. I'm going to use this cotton twine. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the end and twist it to give me a point so that I can feed it easily through these beads. You can count by looking in the little bowl to see how many beads that I used as we go along here. This piece could be hung on the wall, it could be hung on a doorknob, it could be hung um, on a door, you know, as a spring decor piece. You could give it as a gift. I think it would be beautiful for grandmothers or for Mother's Day to give something like this. Okay, so there is my my beads, and I'm just going to make a double knot because one knot will not um, will not hold it. The bead will slip back through. See, so you're going to double knot it. Put that knot right on top of the other knot. That's going to give you some uh, thickness so that the bead won't slide back off. So there you go, nice and secure. And we're going to do the same thing with the other end. Now it is secure. You can, if you make it big enough, you can hang it from side to side, or you can put your carrier or your um, your hanger rather in the back. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of straddle it over the point of that cone, put some glue down, and then use another little scrap of paper to hold it in place. I'm going to put my little clamps here from the Crafter Square in Dollar Tree. Put those on there they work great to hold things in place until they're nice and dry and secure and i definitely don't want this breaking trim off your edges and then i'm going to add a couple of pieces of this fern as my greenery there will be a longer piece in the back and then this one i'm going to trim up just a little bit just for a little variation on the height and I'm going to add it more toward the center. So here you have it. You can go ahead and add buttons to your cone if you would like. You can add more lace. You can do whatever you like to um, to add to this if you like. I like right now that it is just simple. Project number one is going to be a shadow box collage. 
I've got a thrifted card, some paper roses. This is a little metal frame from the thrift store. These little keys came from Michael's a very long time ago. It's an envelope and some stickers. And these have some gold trim on them. And then this thrifted box. Very pretty. Has a lock on the side. Nice little piece. And then I have some of this Martha Stewart paper. This was thrifted. And it has very pretty variety of colors, all of which I think would look good with Victorian or Shabby Chic. And then look at these pictures, y'all. These came from a thrift store and they are old and absolutely beautiful. I could not believe that somebody put these in a used pile, in a I don't want you anymore pile. Oh, my heart is breaking. These pictures have so much history. Look at that. And I really think that they need to have a little more life. We need to give them a little life back. So I'm going to choose one of these in my project. Look at this pretty lady. And this sweet little girl. Okay, so the box has already been cleaned. It's been wiped down and the glass is clean. Now I'm gonna choose the paper that I wanna use as the background. This is just a piece of fabric over a piece of like foam board, I think. I'm gonna take this card and since I really like the print on the inside, that's what we're gonna use. I'm just gonna measure it off here, cut it out and I will trim it down a little bit smaller later. And just use this as a backing behind this picture. This is the one I chose. It's very pretty lady. I'm going to use some double sided tape here and gently put these as far over into the corners as I can so that there's no damage later. If I remove it and press it down. Now there's a space when you press down on that foam backing where the paper just slides right in, which is perfect because there are a bunch of little bitty screws on the back that I did not want to have to fool with. So I can just press that down in there. And that's perfect. Easy. And it stays down. I don't have to glue it or anything. So now I'm just going to get my positioning down for where I want to put my picture. And this is where I decide that I want to trim it down some. Doing this collage reminds me so much of scrapbooking, which is something that I used to enjoy in the early 2000s, but I've gotten away from it. But this was a lot of fun for me to do. I'm just taking some of this old lace ribbon. I'm going to say it's old. It was with a bunch of very old stuff that I got at the thrift store with sewing supplies and things like that. So it has a little age to it. You could probably find something similar at a sewing or notion store yourself. Just going to use a little bit of hot glue. Not a thick bead because it's lace and I would definitely burn myself. Plus, if I'm careful with it, I could probably reuse it if I decided to take this apart. Just turning the corners under there and tacking them down. This does not have to be perfect. So now it's all trimmed up. We get to decide where everything's going to go. I'm going to use my handy dandy glue gun and press one of these paper flowers into the corner. Because there is some space in there, that flower fits perfectly. And look how this slides straight into that lace. I'm just going to use a little bit of glue to keep it from sliding around. Although it fits in there pretty tightly. Now, I got some of this from Dollar Tree reusable gel tape. I'm trying it out for the first time. It's kind of weird to cut. I'm not really sure other than tearing it with my fingers and my scissors are pretty sharp, but it looks kind of kind of goofy the way I'm doing it here, but it worked. And I'm happy to say that so far nothing has fallen off. I'm going to do a little bit of tape in each of the high points on these corners 
And if you use a frame like this, just be sure you cut off anything in the back that would keep it from laying flush. I'm just going to try to center it and then press it down. I found one of these pins at the thrift store. It looked Victorian to me, so I think it is suitable for shabby chic. And I'm just going to place it down in the corner. And it has some little rosettes on it that match sort of what I have going on with the rose in the corner. So now, since I had two of these keys, I wanted to see which one of these would look best in this frame. And I think that this one does because it kind of mimics the, the cutouts in that little frame there that's around the picture. Put another flower in the corner. There's a cameo in the top. This also came from the thrift store. I just don't know why people give this kind of stuff away. Now this is probably not an authentic piece of anything, but she sure looks pretty. And I decided to try a little bit of that tape on this key. And again, it's holding up this metal key. It is indeed a metal key, not plastic. Now I'm going to take a piece of this gold ribbon and going to make a bow. Very simple. You could see how I did that. Simple, simple. And just take a thinner piece of gold ribbon and tie it around the center. I thought that this would be enough for this picture, but then when I looked at it, I thought, no, it needs to be a little more fancy because it's shabby chic and it should be more bulky. It should have more substance. It should look richer. So I decided to double some up and these are, I think I have about seven inches on these lengths of ribbon. And I'm just going to take some of the cotton, I guess it's twine that I got from Dollar Tree and I use it in a lot of projects, especially things that have a, a light color like this. And just went ahead and tied that in the middle to hold those together. And I'm going to move that off and add that to the stack and tie it down. Now, of course, the fluffing and the trimming. Got to take that piece of twine off of there. And I decided to use some of that sticky tape on here, too. I'll let you guys know how this works. If things don't stay where they're supposed to, you'll hear about it in another video. Now I'm just pressing down quite firmly. I did hold that for a minute just to make sure it was bonded. And I'm going to trim the thicker part of the edge of this ribbon off because I want to use it on that key. At first I had one and then I put two I put it, I doubled it over and put the loop through the middle and then just kind of pulled it through so that I could have a little embellishment on the key. Didn't want it to be too much, but I wanted to add some richness and some gold on there. I'm going to add a little piece underneath here, excuse my head. And then I have some of these stickers and these came with the set of cards that I got at Goodwill. I find beautiful cards all the time at Goodwill. I don't even buy cards anymore. I have a box where I collect all kinds of beautiful cards for different occasions. So I'm just adding those around. I even put one on the key here. Make sure it doesn't come off. And then I have a little floral bouquet here. I wanted to add some florals so I just added it on top of that bronze heart. Looking back, I should have left that bronze heart alone. It was perfect the way it was. But I thought I needed to add it at the time. And then I'm taking a pearl bead and putting it right in the center of that bow and trimming up the edges. I'm just doing little slants here on this bow. What do you think about this project? probably could have added much 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 more I did get a little inspiration from Pinterest I saw shabby chic is not something that I have in my house but I do watch a few people who specialize in shabby chic and I have looked on Pinterest at a few ideas 
So this is my creation from inspiration. And I really had a lot of fun doing this. Do you like it? Does this look shabby chic to you? If y'all see one of these frames, you really need to pick it up. Be sure you follow me on my social media, Pinterest and Instagram. Project number two, a shabby framed art. This is a cutout from a card. I just cut that right out. Then I have some doilies here. This is part of a pad of paper. It looks kind of old to me, a little retro, and I got this from Goodwill. This is a scrap of cardboard paper and a beautiful white frame. It doesn't have a backing or anything. I have some gold, splendid gold paint here, and then I'll actually have two paintbrushes. Then I have scraps of ribbon and some other ribbon that I've gotten from the thrift store. I think I have that came off of a project a very long time ago, and then I think I have a little bit of that. Yes, that, that one right there came from Dollar Tree. So I have a variety of whites and creams and pink and gold. This one is a more of a buttery cream color. Okay, so I wanna add some gold onto this white frame. So I'm just going to, I changed out my brushes. I'm just gonna use this brush, load up a little paint, bounce it off, and then start rubbing it across here on the high points of this frame. And this frame already had some, I don't know if it was intentional aging on it or what, but it had some um, distressing already. You can see it on the bottom. I think it was intentional. It matches too closely for it to have been an accident. But then I'm going to go around here and hit all the veining and the little shadows and the cracks with this gold paint. This is going to give it a little bit of richness, I think. And then I'm going to take this flat, smaller brush and use it to go around this inside square in the frame. I shook up my paint and it's still giving me this, which I love so I'm not complaining, but it's still giving me this more of a sheer look right now and I'm, I'm totally fine with that. That's exactly what I wanted on these projects. It's just a memory of the gold. I don't want it to, to be glam, I just want it to be shabby chic. So just done that all the way around and once that is done you just set it aside and let it dry it doesn't take long because we didn't put a lot of paint on here in the first place so while that is drying I'm going to choose the paper that I want and I like this the newspaper print so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to get my piece cut to fit that piece of cardboard so I've just easily done that, lined it up with a ruler and a pencil, and now I'm cutting it out. So I'm going to take my purple glue stick, and I'm going to rub it all over there. And remember that this purple actually disappears, so when you see it later on when I'm crafting, you'll know. You don't have to be totally neat with it, but I want to be sure that I don't miss any spots. So I'm just taking my little tool here and flatten it all out. Next I'm going to add the doily and if you've ever used these before then you know they stick together and they are pretty thin but they really stick together so for instance this looks like one but it's not it's two. But you have to be very careful not to tear these and just kind of work your way around the, the little laser cuts there and it'll come apart. This is what I mean by the mess. Look at this mess that I'm making here. But I want to be sure that I have good coverage so this doesn't start to peel away. I'm going to place this down off to the side. I'm going to hold with one hand and then press and rub 
with the other hand. I'm going to set it aside and let it dry. Now I'm going to start cutting strips for a big bow that I'm going to make. These are 7 inch strips and I'm just going to use a variety of bows. You can use torn fabric, you can use drop cloth, you can use an old t-shirt, you can use anything you want to. You just want to get a bunch of strips and these are the ones that I've chose because they coordinate and they're going to match well with the other project that I did. But you're just going to cut those into pieces. The more you put on there, the better it's going to be, in my humble opinion. Just going to keep adding to it. This little piece of ribbon is beautiful. It's got little pearl beads in the middle of it. Just gorgeous. So keep trimming it. And then the last piece that I cut is going to be the piece that goes around the center of it. That's going to bind it together. Adding in some gold. This is old spool of gold ribbon too that was thrifted. Very pretty. I like this color gold. Okay, so this is what I do. I like to X them over and kind of make sure that I don't have the exact ones laying there. I kind of want to mix it up so there's no particular pattern. But I've seen it done other ways. I've seen where you just stack them all in the middle and tie them off. And that's okay too. You do it whichever way makes you happy. This is just for me. Bind it up, making it look nice and pretty. Okay, so there's that last piece of ribbon. It's about nine inches long. I'm just gonna flip that stack over and tie these in a tight knot. You can do one or two knots, whichever one you wanna do. And then the string that is left is going to be incorporated into the bow. So that's just going to be part of the bow and we don't have to trim anything off. So this is almost completely dry. I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the back of my rose cutout. You could use a sticker if you don't have a card that you want to cut out. And I'm just going to pat that down. And then I'm going to flatten it out nicely. Really press it down into the other layers. And see, almost all of that purple glue is dried now. You can't really see it. And you won't be able to see it all when it's dry. Now I'm going to add the other key that we had in that set. And I'm going to use some gold paint to do that. And I really want to give this one a good coat of gold paint. And it sticks quite nicely to the chippy white paint that was already on there. You want to let that key dry nicely. And in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get this ready to put in the frame. So I'm going to put glue in the corners. And then just carefully around the very outside so that it doesn't show into our opening in the front. So I'm going to flip it over and try to center it and make sure that I don't cover up any of those cutouts in the frame itself. And then in order to get rid of some of the whiteness that is in that picture, since the rest of it looks kind of aged, I'm just going to go ahead and take that dry gold that was already on that brush and I'm just going to brush over the paper all over the inside on the image and on the doily to just make it look a little more cohesive. And this time I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue. This is Gorilla Glue in my Sure Bonder. And then we're just going to pray, press that down. And the last step for this project is to add a bow right into the corner. And that's all there is to that craft. If you haven't tried Shabby Chic, I hope that you consider it. This was a lot of fun. If budget-friendly crafting and DIYs are your thing, you're at the right channel.
starting with the Victorian witch hat. This is a wire form that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to give you some measurements here so that you can find something similar if you don't have any at your Dollar Tree. You can certainly trace this out on a piece of foam board and make your own form. It'll work too. I've done that before on witch hats. I have some felt, just a little scrap here, but it's enough to cover most of my form. And this is going to be the backing. You could maybe use some construction paper or something like that on the back of yours if you choose. But this works for me because I had some scraps that I need to go through anyway. So rather than donating, let's use it. Leave about an inch around each of the sides of the form and then I'm going to cut into the corners here because we're going to wrap this around the wire form. Now my glue temperature setting is on low so it's a cooler temperature. It's going to be easier to work with because I'm going to be using a lot of glue and it's going to prevent some materials that I use later on that are questionable when you're using a very high temp glue gun. So we're just going to use cool for this project. I'm just bending that over now, pressing it down onto this form and onto itself. It doesn't matter that my corners aren't covered. You'll see what we do with that later, but certainly if you have enough material to cover yours, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to wrap the bottom here. I find that using a squiggly line or a little zigzag gives me a little bit better coverage. I'm just pressing that down. You don't want to squeeze your form up. You don't want to change the shape of that wire and it's pretty pliable. So just be careful there. Follow the shape of your form. And I'm gonna go all the way around and do the same thing. This is going to be the back. So what you're seeing is actually the inside and you'll understand that in a few minutes. You'll see what I'm going to do. So the point is going to go a little bit higher than the actual point on the witch's hat because I like the sharper taper on this. So there we go. It's got a little ratty looking end. I am totally okay with that. Now I'm going to take a pillow. This is just one I'm going to use to take the stuffing out of. I don't have any pillowcases to fit it, so it was also in the donation pile. I'm just going to take that apart, fluff it out really well so it's not compacted or too lumpy. We want it to be cloud-like or wispy. Then I'm gonna take, again, the cooler temperature glue, start squeezing that out on the bottom of the triangle part of this hat. We're not going to go onto the flat or brim part of the hat with this. I wanna get, this is gonna be like a padding, so our hat's gonna have some dimension rather than being a flat hat. So we're just going to continue along like this and make sure that it is on the inside and not bulging out over the outside, making sure we don't have any lumps that are bigger than anything else. And we're going to start off with a layer that's going to be pretty much the same width or thickness all the way down. I'm going to continue along and you can see that we have that nice and covered. We can still see all of the black edges. And that's good, we wanna do that. Now about halfway down or two thirds of the way down, we're gonna start thickening up on that section. That's gonna be a little wider, just like it would be with a regular hat. It's gonna be wider at the bottom because that's where your hat goes. It's where your head goes. Okay, so I love this contact paper. It came from the Dollar Tree. I've seen it used on lots of videos and lots of projects, but I thought what a beautiful, shabby, chic, witch's hat this would make. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to peel this apart and you're going to see that I have a little bit of a problem here getting off a clean finish, but that doesn't matter. That's not going to show. It's going to be kind of trimmed off. So you see there on the side, a little messy. That's okay. All right, so the pretty side down. Now I'm going to put the fluffy side of the hat down on top of it. So all of that batting is now on the adhesive side of that contact paper. Now I'm going to trim this out as well. Just going to start by trimming in the bottom, and I want to leave more than an inch on the sides. I want to leave more of like probably two inches because we want to allow for the room that the 
the batting on the inside creates, or that pillow fluff. We don't want to squish it down till it's flat. So just pulling it and wrapping it around, pressing this down. My contact paper stuck just fine to this felt. If yours does not, go ahead and use a little bit of that glue or maybe some spray adhesive to help tack it down there. So I'm just going to wrap that part and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the brim there. I'm pressing it down, then I'm going to cut and fold it down. That way I can still create that curve on the bottom. So see there? Now we still have that nice flat front just like this and we have the curve. So making sure that the batting is not in the brim, go ahead and pull that down and start pressing it down on the felt on the bottom of the back of that brim. Now you can either trim off that extra on the bottom or you can wrap it around, it won't matter. I'm just wrapping the tip up there, elongating that hat just a tad, and you can see that it's padded. It's got some dimension, and I love the look of it. It came out exactly how I saw it in my mind. And you know when you're crafting, it doesn't always turn out that way. You start with the idea, and you think, I'm going to run with this, and then you go completely off course, and you do something else. I like it when a plan comes together. Okay, so we're going to start with this lacy black trim. This came from uh, Goodwill. You can get yours wherever you like. Then you're going to start laying it down. Now I want that, excuse my head, I want that line down there close to the bottom for my first row because we're going to layer this going upwards and I want it to be thick and lush. So that means we're going to have to layer it pretty tightly in here. Now because I'm using a cool temp glue, it that bead of glue will sit right there on that. If you use hot glue, it's going to run down on your table and you're going to make a mess. Going to continue along just like this, layering over the top about hmm, probably a quarter of an inch, I would say. You can see where I'm running that bead of glue for each one of those layers and you can do it all the way up. Keep in mind this is a curved and if you're using a straight piece of ribbon, you may need to kind of bunch it up a little bit to get it to fit the curves of your hat. Okay, so we're going to cut it a little bit longer because we want to cover up that top piece. So you're just going to fold your lace over and press it down. That's going to give it the little black edge there. Just going to tuck under here and then keep going. And I'm going to do this process until I get up where the hat meets the brim. So the base of the hat, the triangle there, meets the brim. Easy enough, right? And I think one more run will be perfect. Y'all have to excuse my head. I'm standing up because I had to raise my camera way up high to be able to get this in the view for you. Okay, so same thing here. It's curved. We're just going to curve it on around, let it do its thing. We're not going to see it from the back, so this is not going to matter. Now, I also found this pretty mesh at uh, Goodwill as well. And I thought, well, it's a piece of, I guess, sheer material, sheer fabric. I'm just going to kind of a accordion fold it or gather it up like this. And we're going to tie this to make like a sash around the hat. Now, I did not have any longer piece than this. I would have loved to have it hanging down like a veil, but I didn't have enough for that. So I'm doing what I can with what I've got. I had to use it on this piece though. Clearly it had to be used. It's very Victorian. I'm gonna take that glue again on a cooler temp and be very careful that you don't burn your fingers, but the thickness of this is allowing me to touch it without hurting myself. And I'm gonna press it down and then you want to flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Keep it in mind that you want to keep it as low down to the brim as you can so there's no gaps. Just like that. And by the way, if you're looking for any of the products that I use, most of my tools can be found linked below in the description box. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so just so that you know that, um, I want to let you know that I do earn a tiny bit of money from it, but it, it's at no extra cost to you. So 
I just put those down there because I think it would be helpful to you, and if it helps you, then it helps me. Okay, so rather than tying in a knot, which would take up too much of the length of my little sash here, I've decided just to loop it over and tie it off. And I'm just tying it off with a little scrap piece of raffia that I have. But you can use ribbon, you can use a zip tie, whatever you want to use if you want to do it the same way as me. Now it's time to make it look very fancy. We're going to start using some picks. Use any type of black picks you have if we're doing black and white. I have some Weeping Willow, I have a Dollar Tree pick, and I have some thrifted, I think those are oak leaves down there. And I'm just going to kind of lay them out, see what I have, and see how I want to fix this for this hat. You could always go right across the brim on the bottom if you would like to do it this way. But I think I'm going to try something different. So trim up where you need to trim. And layer these on, just like I'm doing here. I try to keep these in my hand once I start cutting them down so I know exactly where to put my ties. These little picks from Dollar Tree are amazing in my opinion. There's so many different pieces on there. You can really trim them up and cut them down. You'll see me do that on a project later in this video as well. So right now we're just going to leave this as one piece. I'm going to take that bottom, that second piece of oak stem and put it across the bottom where the stems are so that you can't see them. And it is hid and it makes a beautiful little swag, don't you think? I have some black zip ties. I'm going to put those around here. These are great. They come in a huge pack from Dollar Tree, so you really, really save money by buying them there. Clip it off. And then now we need to attach it down to our hat. Now, I already had this piece left from the sash, which is glued firmly in place. So I feel like it's going to be strong enough for this part just to tie it on right across where we attached it with a zip tie. So that's what I'm doing. Tying it off in a few knots. Trimming that off because we don't need it anymore. It's done its job. And then I'm going to see how I want it to hang. Do I want it to lay off to the side? Do I want it to stand up a little bit more? I think it needs a little bit more support. So I'm going to just take a piece of floral wire and flip this over and attach it right from the little stem here to the frame underneath. And it stands up like this, just off to a little slant. And you can see here where I twisted it, right there. It's staying in place quite nicely, just like that. Okay, so now the bottom part of our hat is done. We need to work on the top up there. I've got some of this really cool mesh tubing, and it's kind of like uh, spiky or tinsel-y like. It's got little things poking out of it. I don't know what you call that. But um, I got those from Dollar Tree in the Halloween section, and I thought, that's so cute, and it kind of looks like spider legs. So I'm just gonna tie those up, and then I want to put a jewel on there, right? Yes, a ruby would be beautiful since we have that red rose. So I'm just going to put some glue in the center and place down this beautiful jewel because this is a very regal witch and we want her to look lovely. And by the way, these leaves are velvet. They're so pretty. I'm going to tie this on and then tie it right on that little extra piece at the end of the hat. It elongates that hat. It really brings your eye up there and continues that beautiful richness from the top all the way down through the bottom. Once I've got it tied on, I'm going to glue it down because that is contact paper, which has a slick surface, and this could easily pop off. So I'm going to glue it down and trim it up and a little more glue behind that stone just to hold it in place. And I have no idea where I got this stone from. It was, has been in my craft supplies, so I'm not sure where it came from. Now, I wanted to dull this down just a bit because it was coming off a little bright. And she is a witch, so she's probably had this hat for a millennia. So I took my little furniture markers and just colored that down a little bit and uh, deepened up that color. Now, for the hanger, I'm just going to use a twisted piece of floral wire into a loop, press it down right over where that rope or that little piece of jute was before, let it dry, and then it's ready to hang. What do you think? This is definitely a different spin on a witch hat, for sure. Follow me on my social media. I'd love to see you on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram.
Okay, now we have a Victorian dress form. If you don't have something like this that I got at Goodwill, you can definitely use those floral phones. One you would just cut like the top third of it off and invert it on top of a, another one that is completely one piece. And then you would get basically the same shape. But I'm gonna show you how to use it with what we have. So, some greenery picks and a reddish color. I've got another Dollar Tree pick, some red ribbon, and some more of that black trim. Love these. I should have gotten more. Really, really love them. I think they come in a purple, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a purple. Okay, so I have scraps of this left, and I thought, you know what? Let's do a wreath form. Let's, let's give her a beautiful ball dress. So, of course, proportionately, you would never wear these two things together, but it gives you the idea of her having her dressing station and all of her goodies set up so that she can be beautiful and she can be queen of the Halloween ball. That's how I see this witch. She's a good witch. She's not bad. Okay, so to cover this top part, I'm just putting some little darts almost in here so that the bodice part, which is where my hand is, would go over the chest, would narrow down into the waist. And so in order to make that lay flat, I need to cut some slits up to that area and then just press it down. Very simple. And then you will see that it starts to have somewhat of a female shape. Okay, and then I'm just gonna trim this off here because there's gonna be something very special about this dress that you'll see at the end of the video, so be sure you stick around. Okay, now, because I don't have anything to really attach my contact paper to, I'm gonna use a little bit of clear tape. The bottom of this dress is gonna be wrapped with contact paper. This is so I have a nice, even, easy surface to attach down my lace trim. So I'm just gonna cut down my contact paper. I got this from Dollar Tree, so you can find yours there. It's gonna be about the same height as it would be up to the waist area of that dress. Cut it down, take the backing off, and then I'm just going to lay it where it needs to be. Now, for this shape, I'm gonna basically try to get the bottom to fit first. So I'm sticking it down on the tape that's there, and that's why the tape is there. It has something for the contact paper to grip to. So I'm just pressing down with my fingers and I'm going to be trimming off what I don't need. So once we get all the way around, I won't need any excess. It's just in the way anyway. I'm gonna cut down to where the bottom of the dress starts to taper upward and then pull and overlap. You're not gonna see this, it is not a problem, but there you go. Now it's like a little closed in cage and we can put all of this lace right on top. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and start going around. Again, please use your cool temperature and protect your fingers. I didn't do it here. I should have had my finger protectors on, but I really wanted to get this video out to you so I was rushing. People are enjoying, it seems, my Halloween content, so I am trying to make sure that I give you lots and lots to look at, lots of inspiration. I know I feel very inspired when I get comments from you guys and, you know, encouragement and love and support. It really makes me keep going. It really keeps me motivated and um, it just lightens my mood. It lightens my day and it makes this amount of work so much easier to do. So I appreciate it so much. Can you guys believe we are over 4,000 now? 4,200 and something. So if you wanna show me some love, you can buy me a coffee. Look in the link down in the description box. Thank you. It's certainly not required, but I'll give you a shout out. Okay, so when we get to the top and we're trying to finish off the waist section, we're just gonna fold this over kind of straight and then trim it down. Don't worry if this doesn't look perfect because we are going to embellish this, of course. So what do you think? This is a pretty little dress. Got her beautiful flowers on the top and the lace layers on the bottom. And we need to make the lace lay flat. So we're just gonna take a couple of snips here into the natural 
little areas where the lace goes upward, we're just going to put some little slits there and that's going to help it lay flat when we put it down. So you'll see in just a moment, it's going to be a little blurry, but you, you get the gist. Okay, see? See now, it'll stand up straight and you can see the little lace on the bottom. I want to trim the top, so I've cut a piece of lace down. You can see how I'm trying to see how much I need. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to use that cool glue again. And then working in little sections, I'm going to go around the top with just the trim part of that lace and press it down right over the top. Just like that. Are you guys enjoying this video? Do you like witch decor and your Halloween? Good witch, of course. Nothing bad, nothing negative, nothing, you know, this is a, this is a good witch. This could be Glinda the good witch at Halloween. Who knows? But I hope you do like it. And I've got lots of Halloween videos and all kinds of inspiration and goodness. So be sure you check out those videos as well. I will have them linked. All right, I'm just gonna give a little extra trim here to cover up any extra glue or mess that I have there. And it's the same mesh. I'm just gonna go around there. Do not press this mess. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Do not press the mesh down too firmly because it will go flat on you. It will be completely flat instead of cylindrical like that. Next, we're going to put uh, almost like a belt and we're gonna cut off a piece of ribbon here for that. And I'm going to cut my ends in a slant. You can dovetail um, or anything that you prefer to do on yours. And you don't have to use wired ribbon and you don't have to use a piece that is this big. Totally up to you, whatever you like. Okay, so I'm just gonna take one of these picks and continue to cut it apart because we're gonna use this in separate parts. This is a smaller item. So the little spray of flowers that we're gonna put on her waistline is going to be a bit smaller in scale than what is on the hat. So I'm just, you know, kind of looking around, seeing what I think I might like. I love this. And this is not a rose, this is like a carnation, I think. Okay, so I'm going to play around with my placement, see how I want each one of these little individual picks to go. You do whatever looks good to you, and certainly you don't even have to cut this apart. You could leave it into one piece if you like the way it was, or just bend it around on the wires. But you'll have to cut the big stalk, that big chunk on the bottom off so that it lays flat. It's just going to be easier for you to work with. Take another one of those zip ties and zip it up. Trim off your extra. I always use my clippers because I don't want to mess up my scissors. So I use these little bull nose pliers. Okay, now I'm just twisting around their own wire so you can do that. And then going to decide how I want this to lay. What's going to be the top? What's going to be the bottom? I'm going to use this little ribbon sash that we made and it's going to go right around that section. It's going to hold it down better than glue would hold it. Well, that's my opinion. That's my opinion and experience. And I've been doing this a long time. I always say, do what works for you. Now, I wanna add some more red in here. And I think that the beautiful reddish color in these leaves from this thrifted pick will work great in here. So I'm just gonna add two of these pieces, just the oak pieces off of here. Thread it up. If you have extra pieces of wire, just cut those off. Just like that. Now you can put some picks in the top if you would like, and you will have a beautiful little arrangement. Those are my leftover picks, or you can leave it just as it is. Whatever you choose to do is gonna be great. For project number one, we are going to be doing a spider frame. 
we're going to use some spider web and some creepy cloth. This Dollar Tree sign with the skulls on it. And then this is a thrifted frame. It's got some wire across it. Maybe a little girl had it for bows. I'm not sure. But I thought this would look very pretty with this. So on the edge of this Dollar Tree sign, it's kind of rough. You can kind of see the little MDF or cardboard. So I'm just going to take my little emery board here and just file this down. I found this at Dollar Tree. It's really good for these projects where you got to get around the little bumps and curves. Look, I'm filing his teeth there. And just go all the way around so that you don't see the paper sticking out. I'm going to use my antiquing wax and a baby wipe. And just dot some on there and rub it together. And we are going to make some shadowing and some dimension on this. By going around the edges. All the way around. And you can make this as wide as you would like. If you would prefer to do this with a brush. If you like the brush strokes you can do that. But I really like to do this. I feel like I have a little more control with a wipe in my fingers. You want to put the shadows where the eye orbits are, around the nose area, maybe around the jawline, and where the heads sit on top of one another. Because those are the places that you would naturally see shadows. And by doing this, you're going to make this Dollar Tree sign look a lot more expensive. Now while that is drying, we are going to work on this beautiful frame. Now this is a white frame and it's a bright white. And I prefer a more rustic look, a more aged look. And certainly if this is something that we would find in a haunted home, a haunted house, then we would want it to be more dark. We would look, we would think that it would be maybe aged or gilded or something like that. For me, I am going to just make it look like it is very aged and kind of dusty and dirty like it would be if it was in a very old home. So I'm just using a dry brushing technique for this, dotting it in that wax, dotting most of it off, and then going back over all of the indentions and details and raised areas on here. Don't worry about if it looks like it's too dark because we're going to be wiping back most of this. What I mean by that is I'm going to be using a dry cloth and wiping off all of the areas on the top. And that's really going to bring more attention to the recessed areas. If you want to send me an email with some of the projects you have done that maybe I've inspired you to do, feel free to send them to me at my email address, which is in the description box below. I would love to see it, and I would also love at some point to feature some of these projects on my channel so that you get some attention to your work. Continue around all the way till you get as much detail as you want, and then here I am taking that dry um, cloth and just wiping it off. So the top parts are going to be, you see how that looks so much more detailed now? I'm going to give you a closer look. I'll lift it up for you and let you see. See the difference? Oh, I love this. I've had this frame for probably a year and a half waiting to do a project like this. So I'm going to use some of this black spider web. Certainly if you prefer to use the white, you can do that. If you like the neon, uh, the purples, the pinks, the whatever you have, just go ahead and use that to suit your taste. And then there's a depression around here. And I thought, okay, well, I wasn't really sure how it would work using hot glue just on the fabric. So I thought if we would use some popsicle sticks, they'll fit right down in that area and it should kind of trap the spider web between the frame and the popsicle stick. And that would hold it together better. So that's just what I did. But you can use whatever te technique that you've used previously and whatever works best for you. You know, I'm learning too. I don't have any um, training in doing this type of thing is just self-taught. Everything I do is self-taught. My florals, the painting, everything is just self-taught. So I'm still learning too, just like you are. All right, so now I'm gonna take some of this creepy cloth. Now this is more like a, it's almost like a cheesecloth, but it's called creepy cloth, but it's not like the ones from Dollar Tree. I got it at the thrift store and I really couldn't tell you. However, I feel like whether you use this type or the one with the looser weave, any of that would look good. 
this is just going to give it a little more dimension again and I'm going to um, you can see I'm trimming it now but I use the same technique when I put the spider web down I use just a little bit more of the popsicle stick you can see the smaller pieces to just glue that one down right on top of it just sandwich in between and so now that we've got the back finished and I'm I'm satisfied with that I'm gonna go ahead and work on how we're gonna attach this sign down to the frame luckily there are lots of little gaps in the frame on the side so we can just use our pipe cleaners and some hot glue and I'm just using some masking tape and press these into place so that we have something to put through those open areas and attach it to the frame these little spatulas are great to keep you from burning your fingers because um, the glue gun I'm currently using will take your fingerprints off yeah that's the big boy over there now I'm just gonna feed these through this frame and I hope y'all can find something like this maybe you have an old mirror that's broken you could get the frame I feel like this was probably a mirror at one point and somebody else repurposed it and when they were done they took it to the thrift store and so I was able to benefit from it it's like a plastic material it's very very lightweight so it didn't cost me very much at all which is always a plus because I am super thrifty oh by the way the popsicle stick you could see there on the bottom I do fix that it came loose but I do fix that no worries all right so I am gonna go ahead and put some more spider web on the top of this frame if you don't want to do this at this point you can wait until the last step to do it but for me because I know I'm gonna put a bow on there I feel like it will help hold this in place and anything I can do to make my project stick together and look good and just you know and be efficient with it and quick with it we want to get our work done but we don't want to be here all day long and you certainly do not want your projects that you work super hard on to fall apart and the spider web is just kind of weird it's not meant to be a permanent thing you know it's a Halloween decoration you use it you throw it away now I'm gonna make a bow for it and I'm not gonna make a huge tremendous crazy wacky bow so don't be afraid I'm going to use some of that velvet ribbon from Dollar Tree. There's only about three feet on a roll. I'm going to use the spiderweb ribbon from Dollar Tree. And then this is some that I've thrifted. And it's just a small piece. But I'm going to use it and work with it. So I've found when I'm working with scraps of bows that don't have the same lengths, making a funky bow is a really easy way to do it. So this is how you do it. I'm going to have about three or four inches of a loop. You can see I'm folding it over. And I'm going to pinch it about three or four inches down and then place it in the crook between my pointer and my pointer finger and my thumb. I'm going to hold it tightly right there while I continue to fold, pinch, and tuck the next one. Again, if you just have scraps of bows or scraps of ribbons, this is a really easy bow to make that is a nice looking bow. Don't you like the elegance of that black and red and the velvet and the lace? It's so pretty to me. That just, it really looks elegant. And that's what made me think of doing these projects. Something elegant. Something that you might would actually see in a very old historical home that's been left alone for a long time. And maybe it's haunted by a super chic ghost okay so we're going to dovetail our ends these tails are not all the same length and i that's not a and that's also not a worry with this type of bow and you'll see in a moment go ahead and start fluffing out after you've got your tails all finished fluff out the little loops of the bow and then start pulling these up almost like an octopus as if the loops on top were the head of the octopus and all of these little tails are going to be the legs that's kind of the idea you can lay it down and do this or you can just do it in your hand whichever way is easiest for you pull them apart and pull them away from each other because you don't want all the same colors together you want to kind of divide them up and get good color all the way around so you see some of those tails are a little bit shorter I like that and I will be going ahead here and trimming up a little bit more here and there until I get the look that I like it's always best to have a little bit extra you know I think I've mentioned that before with bows have a little bit extra on there and then if you trim it off that's okay but it's difficult to put anything back right 
So if I wouldn't have been so overzealous, I could have put a pipe cleaner in there to attach it to my project. Hindsight, right? Okay, so we're just going to use a piece of floral wire and thread it through there. Easy. I do this all the time because I always forget to add something to attach it to the projects. I'm just going to twist it around here tightly to my frame and I like it off to the side. Just going to do some more adjusting on my bow. Never leave a bow unfluffed. It's just not fair. It's just not right. Always fluff your bows. It makes a big, big difference. And you know I love y'all. I want you to have beautiful projects that bring you joy and make you proud when you look at it. When you pass by it, you go, I made that. Yes. So this is how she's going to look. Very nice. Not too big. Not overpowering. I'm just moving that around. And I don't even glue that top layer down. I just stretch it around. Okay, another thing. Last minute. I took two big spiders. These came from Dollar Tree. I use my building blocks on the back to give them, because they're concave, so this will give them something to stand up with. And at the end screen, you're going to see that these will be attached onto that frame. See there? Now it's got something to glue to. So stay tuned to the end. Next one is our owl cage. Okay, this is something that I have thrifted. This is an owl that I thrifted. So a bird cage and an owl. I've had this little owl for a while now too. It's time for a makeover. So we're gonna use some flat black paint. Spray paint them and then this is how they look. Gorgeous, very pretty. Love the look of it. I've been hanging on to this project too in my head. And finally for Halloween, we're gonna come together. All right, so using some rich wine, burgundy, rust colors we're going to make a beautiful little home inside of this bird cage or whatever you want to call it i'm going to use some floral foam to put on the bottom it doesn't need to fill the entire cage up because you just don't need that much foam and why waste it if you don't have to use it right grab your cool temp glue which i did not use so it immediately started crackling and melting my foam but if you just quickly press it down and hold it in place it'll pretty much stay for you that's my experience at any at any rate. If you've got a better way of doing it, go right on ahead. So I'm just going to put my glue bottle, um, my paint bottle, in the middle just to hold that space so I know when I'm working my project that there's going to be space there for me to put the owl back in. So it's just a space holder, that's all. If you don't need it, then you don't have to do it. I'm going to start working in an A pattern. Right, left, side to side, north, south, east, and west. That's what I'm going to do, starting off with my picks on the bottom. If I would have had more picks, I would have used these instead of using the loose leaves that I have to the side. But you never know what you're going to have, and if you're going to run out of something, I'm going to show you what you can do if you run out of your picks, but you have loose flowers. So you just take old stems from other flowers or other greenery, and you just glue them to the back of a beautiful leaf that you like. It's on wire, so it too can be bent, and then you just put it in the foam. How easy was that? That was so easy. Now, these picks that you see me putting in now are from Target. I got those on 90% clearance a uh, year before last, I think. So I've just cut it into pieces because the color is perfect for what I'm looking at. I've got some either eucalyptus or boxwood, whatever this is, that's glittery and black. I've used it in other projects. These were my last two pieces. I'm going to stand those up in the cage for the, the owl so he will have some privacy in there. A little hiding spot. These little berry picks came off of some of the other greenery. I just pulled them off and I'm just going to stick those in. They're in a deep purple color. It's just gorgeous. And these beautiful flowers, I don't know what these are. They look like camellias to me, but they are stunning. They are just beautiful. I'm going to add those around here and there. They were thrifted as well, y'all, but I know you can get them at Hobby Lobby because at my walkthrough, I saw them. Now for this one, I am going to pull the center out and the first top 
few layers because I want this to make a little nest. What I'm doing now is taking a wood carving tool and stabbing down on top of the leaves that I glued on the bottom. I don't know where that clip is, but I glued some down. I made that little slice so that we could put the stem from this right down on the inside. It needs to sit nice and flat because this flower is going to be the base or the nest where the owl is going to sit. So it needs to be flat. I'm going to hold it down with my hand for a while and now you can see it forms like a little nest. Do you ever do something when you're crafting and you're like, that is just, you shock even yourself because you think, wow, that's pretty cool. I love it when a project comes together, y'all. I'm telling you right now, I'm not vain. I'm not egocentrical. I'm not stuck up. But when something works out right, I kind of want to pat myself on the shoulder. And then I can show it to you, right? And then you can do it. Doesn't he look happy in there so far? Okay, so giving him a chance to dry, let that glue dry, I'm going to go ahead and cover up the foam that is in the front with a couple of leaves. Same colors that I already have kind of going on there. And I'm using these colors again because I feel like they're they're elegant, they're jewel tone, they're just really beautiful and dark and mysterious. Oh, I just love it. And then once I close the cage, because the bird is in there and he's happy where he's supposed to be, I'm going to add one flower right into the front with the... Um, where we already had those leaves we just glued down. So that's where that flower went, right into there. It went right through the leaves into the foam. Now I'm gonna turn it from side to side and make sure that it looks fairly symmetrical, nice and even, and that there's an even amount of thickness in the foliage and in the flower so there's no gaps and everything looks pretty and neat. You lift it up and look around and make sure everything's like it should be. And so here I found a little space that needs a little more foliage. So I'm just gonna take another pick, same beautiful colors, and just push that in there. And this is how it will look. I really like this one, y'all. Very pretty. I'd love for you to check out my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. The last and the easiest project is a framed cat. Here's a little thrifted frame that I got. And this is a lantern from Dollar Tree. I'm going to choose which panel I want to use because it has four panels. Two different prints. And I like the cat, so I'm going to cut the cat part out. And then make sure that it, it works. And yes, it is going to fit nicely in that frame. Perfect. I'm going to cut the top off. I'm going to spray that frame in this black. Once it is dry, we will proceed. Check, check, and recheck, right? I'm going to trace on a piece of scrap paper right on the inside of this frame. And then I'm going to cut right to the outside of the line. You see I leave about a mm, quarter of an inch, give or take, because it does get a little bit bigger as I go around the curve here. And we're going to use this kind of as a template to make sure that I don't cut too much off, but that I have enough to glue down. It'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to place that down and just use a little bit of regular scotch tape transparent tape, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to hold it in place while I cut it so nothing slips. Then I'm going to cut the same distance outside of that line to make sure I have plenty and I don't cut it too short. And I'm just cutting through the plastic part and I'm cutting through the paper part. Because I know exactly where I want the cat to be positioned. And this way I can get it centered right in the frame just like that okay i'm just using my clear elmer's school glue for this you could use probably e6000 i don't know 
um, how it would do on the plastic, but the Elmer's glue works nicely. I did have to wait a good bit for it to dry, but that's okay because you know, when you're working on a bunch of projects at once, you've got time, you know, leave it alone and move on to something else, right? And this way you won't be able to see it on that plastic film if it does, you know, if you get a little too much or whatever. You won't be able to see it. I'm gently putting it down, tapping it in place with my fingers, and just slightly kind of pulling it to the side to make sure I don't have any wrinkles. Then I'm going to press it down and then let it dry. Once it is dry, you can take some small scissors and just trim off the excess on the back. Y'all, I am so happy with all of the stories I got on my um, Halloween Familiars video. So many people have had black cats in their lives, and I heard so many cat names and about your childhood, and I love that. I hope we can keep doing that. It helps me get to know you, and that's special to me. Because I really do, I really do love and appreciate you guys. I really, really do. So I want this to stand up. And I'm going to use these little Dollar Tree little blocks. You can get this in a pack in the Crafter Square. I just colored them with my Sharpie because, to be honest, I could not find my black furniture repair marker. So this was the next best thing. It was right there, and it does the same thing. Just makes a mess, kind of. I'm going to use hot glue to just attach that to the little parts there. And you won't be able to see it when it stands up. And look how nicely she stands there she is miss uh, okay now here's the candle so i'm going to turn it on and you can see that it flickers it's a little flameless candle and it fits perfectly around that doesn't it it's going to look good together i want to make it look a little richer so i'm going to take some of this bronzy paint and i'm going to be kind of dry brushing this the little paintbrush is from dollar tree and these are good i can't recommend all paint brushes but for me these work really good for this type this technique I just started off by going over the rosebuds and the rose just to kind of see how much coverage I wanted but then I decided to go ahead and just there's little dots on the frame I wanted to go ahead and go around all of those dots and just bring that out just really bring it out I don't want to have completely matte black on this or satin black Got to bring some richness back into it, right? We got all those beautiful colors and tones in the in the frame and in the owl, so we need it here too. And you see how that just highlighted all those high spots? Highlighted that. Looks so nice. And I think she's a cutie. All right, so here's our beautiful owl and the frame. I could have taken some bronze and went over the eyes in the skulls or changed the color to something else, but I like it. It kind of stands out being that it's not exactly the same color, but I don't mind that. And it's Halloween, so we can do the glitter, can't we? You can see how I put the spiders on the frame. Here's our happy owl. I had a couple of scratches on it where I was putting it in the frame, kind of scratching it on the metal, and I just used a paint pen and stuck it through the cracks in the cage and just dotted over, you know, where I had scratched a little paint off. No worries. And then here's our kitty cat, and she's lit up with a flameless candle. Okay, so to start off, I have four projects. The first one, I'm showing you a bunch of vintage ribbons I have to choose from, and I get these from Goodwill. And here is some more. I've got some ornaments of different sizes and shapes and some little jewels and snowflakes, a variety of papers and embellishments, just things that I thought may fit along with a Victorian inspired, um, you know, Christmas theme. So here's some paper too that I have, tissue paper. And then I have this little box that had ornaments in it. Decided to use it. We're gonna need some Jenga blocks. And I'm gonna start off by taking my wood tent 
and I'm going to color this entire thing in this dark color. I know that with the Victorian theme, lots of things in their home, they decorated with dark colors. So they would have had at Christmas time more uh, burgundies and maroons and um, dark green jewel tones and dark wood. So I decided that this would be good for what we're going to be doing. After you put this tint on, you just go and wipe it off. And that's what I'm doing here. And then, of course, you're going to need to let it dry before you do anything else with it. I just put mine in front of a fan until it's completely dry. I also did some little feet, and you'll see that in a minute. So here's this beautiful paper. I have used this on another project. And I'm just going to go through and cut out the little images that I think would be cute. Go into this paper. I'm going to cut out some images from here, too. And then I'm going to take this ornament apart and just save the top part to use in the project. Because I don't think the font will fit. So here's the little feet and they're almost like little pots. I'm going to use some hot glue and put these on the bottom. This is going to be like a stand-in curio, I think is what we could probably call it. It's almost like a Christmas card that is 3D. I was looking this up and I saw some things on Pinterest, um, some Tim Holtz things and his are amazing. You should go to Pinterest and check those out if you're interested in doing this type of a style. So I'm just going to take some pieces of paper and I've cut them down to the right size. You know, just use your ruler and measure it down and then get your glue stick, put it in there and it'll hold this perfectly and you won't have any mess on your papers. The tissue is thin so be very careful with that and just kind of I'm doing this in fast motion because I always do way too much video, but I'm being very gentle with the tissue paper parts. So I've got the cute little girls in the top and the cute little girl in the bottom, just kind of near each other. And I didn't start off with the, with the theme of having this like a child's kind of project, but I think it kind of turned out that way like a, a children themed little thing. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay, again, with cutting down your paper and getting everything, you see how dark that green is? It's just really pretty. I kind of went by the colors also that were in the tissue paper. And um, that's how I helped, you know, kind of get an idea of what I wanted to go there. And I've also used a doily here. This is just a paper doily and I cut it down just a little piece of it. You can use ribbons or pieces of fabric, anything you like. I went ahead and used this pick and just cut it into pieces and I'm gonna add a little like a Christmas tree in there. This is three dimensional, so you want some things that are flat, you want some things that kind of stand out, but I didn't want anything to be wider than the actual box itself, which kind of limits you to what you can put in there. You can also consider little miniature Christmas ornaments, you can do buttons, you know, whatever you like. So I'm just going to place these here and there until I get the look that I like. I used to be a scrapbooker, so I really enjoyed that. Mixing patterns and, and you know, pictures and just really giving dimension to things. And I do try to include that in my projects that I do as well. I thought that the font was okay for these two um, Christmas signs that I'm adding. And then the little one in the bottom also, you can't really see that one that well. But um, I think that the pictures in the font suit the style. I'm just going to take this gold eucalyptus pick and just cut it into pieces. And I'll be using the pieces for other parts in the project and uh, later on in the other projects. So I just want to add to this jewel here. I'm going to take these, and these are plastic pretty much, and um, put some hot glue on the back and then put them on the back of this little jewel and I am not sure where I got this from. Probably Goodwill, but it could have been something that my daughter had. I don't know. Now I think I want to add this one on the outside to give a little more dimension. But first we need to place the jewel down. And then I'm going to add a little more. Gotta have a little sparkle when you're doing uh, Victorian type or old fashioned. Uh, I wouldn't call it retro. I, I kind of think of the 50s, 40s, and 50s when I think of retro, but old fashioned or 
Victorian Christmas, I think of these types of things where they use jewels, they use things that they had for their decorations and they use natural greenery and I think my little greenery choices look pretty close to uh, being realistic. So I'm just going to take that piece, fold it up, make it look like it's intended to be that way, put it there. I've chosen this red and gold for the trim. I'm going to put a piece on the top and a piece on the bottom, so I'm just going to cut those down. If they fray too much, you can use a little hot glue and, you know, put those where they will stay. Or a piece of tape on the back would probably do it too, some clear tape. And I'm just going to go right on the edge. And I decided to flip this one upward because I want to do something special on the top. So this little bicycle ornament, look how cute this is. I want to put it on the top. Yes, and I'm pretty sure that this style of bicycle was around in the Victorian era. I know I've seen pictures of things that are similar to this, so I think that it looks really good with this. And it's red, it matches, and we've got the little children that are featured inside the box, so I think this would be cute right on top. So once the glue is dried, I'm going to take some of that gold ribbon and just tie a little bow because we want this to look like a Christmas present or a Christmas wish right on top of the box. So we're just going to make the little simple bow to go on the top and try to get it small so it doesn't look overly out of proportion. And I'm just going to glue it down right here on close to the handlebars. And then I'm going to continue along with some Dollar Tree table scatter. Just like that. All right. This is something that came off of the tree. Um, not the tree, the bicycle. It's a uh, little holly leaves, and I decided to add those back in there. I think they look really good. They're miniature, they're cute. You could do a little gift in there if you wanted. Okay, on to the next project. I have got some of this tinsel that came off of a Dollar Tree something. I got some beads, I got some vintage uh, trim. I've got a little bead ball and we're going to use the same greener that we used on the other project. And this is the Christmas card. Little Santa card and this is a tart pan. This came from Goodwill. I found two of them. Can't wait to use the other one. So I'm just going to cut it apart trim off the little hanger part just so that it is almost looks like it's supposed to be round. I don't want to leave a flat spot on there. Make it look nice. And then I'm going to cut down a length of my ribbon or my ruffle trim, whatever you want to call it. And this is white and gold. So one project that I'm going to do is going to be like completely silver and white. And then this one is going to be more of a gold thing. Just in case you like the gold more. So I'm just going around with the hot glue and because this is a metal pan, you got to work quick or the glue will cool off too fast and you won't get any grip on your fabric. So I'm going to go around like this, just using my silicone protectors on my fingers to push it into the corners so that it somewhat keeps the shape or follows the shape of that star. Just like that. So a quick question while this is going on. Did any of you guys have parents or grandparents that decorated a tree in this style? This is not something that you really see anymore, um, except on Pinterest. I don't see other people doing this style. So I'm just wondering, do you remember this? What are your memories of Christmases when you were a child? Because I think this is really cool. You know, the silver and the gold and it's a little too much for my rustic taste, but doing the projects is so much fun. There's so many layers to it. It's just some, it's a type of richness, I guess, that I feel doing these projects. Plush. Just, I love it. So we got metal, we got ribbon, we've got this, this tinsel wrap that I pulled off. I think it was a Dollar Tree stocking ornament, but I saved it. So going around here, I'm just getting the right amount to go around that uh, circular card. And then I'm going to start wrapping it almost like a wreath just to bulk it up a little bit. 
and I'm just going to cut some more pieces and go around until I get it as thick as I, I think I want it. And making sure that all those ends are tucked under so that you don't have any little pieces sticking out. You want this to have a, a nice finished look. So just press them into the form. And then we'll be placing it right down on top. Just going to add the hot glue. You can use a cool temperature glue if you would like on these projects because you're going to be touching a lot and a lot of small things. You do not want to burn yourself. So I'm going to put a glop of glue down there and put this little bead. I don't know what this is like a beaded ball. I think it was on a uh, Mardi Gras necklace, maybe. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit greener, greenery in there. And then again on the other side. And I know that I want to put a bow on the top of the star. I found with doing these types of projects, if you think you've gone too far, just take it one more step and then you can quit. Right? Yeah. So I'm just going to put this right on the top just to add a little more gold to it. And you know, you could, if you have a star that you want to use, you could spray paint it. You could do whatever you would like. Um, but since I'm using hot glue in here, I can always take this apart and use this project for this tart pan for another project. And I like that. I like that about hot glue. As long as it's not Gorilla Glue because that stuff is permanent. Okay, so I'm going to make a little rosette now. I'm going to take some of that same red ribbon that we used before. I'm going to place it in the middle of the button. Just the red part, leaving that gold trim toward the top. Now I'm going to turn, make a little gather, and add a little more glue each time. You don't want to use too much glue because your bow will be too bulky. It'll get really tall instead of wide, and we don't want that to happen. We don't want it to look like a pine cone, in other words. We want it to look like a flower. And we want to have enough room that I can drop a bead down in the middle of there. So the size of my finger with that protector is the perfect size. Plus, being able to get my finger on the inside like that helps me to press it down and hold it in place until the glue does its job. So here's our little rosette. I'm just pinching it down really hard to make sure it doesn't come undone. And then there, drop a little pearl right in the middle of it. Look at that beautiful little flower. I'm gonna put some hot glue back there and put it right there. I think it's cute. What do you think about that little flower? You can do that with any type of like a curved um, trim. You can do that. So I'm adding some more leaves there. And then I'm gonna tack down my ribbon on the sides just a little bit. Both sides, straightening out the ribbon not wired so it's kind of floppy and then I'm just going to cut the ends off in a slant. All right, we're going to make a hanger out of that same tinsel. If I would have had like a gray tinsel, I would have used that one instead, like a silverish gray, but this is what I had. It was white and then I had some red, but I thought this one looked better. Smoke and hot glue. And then I'm going to add just a little piece of ribbon over the top just to hold it in place. All right, and I decided I wanted to add some candy on there. So I've cut apart a pick that I already had with little pieces of candy and I put a peppermint, a little, looks like a, a gum gumball maybe, and then a little package candy and one pearl right there. And I'm gonna add another pearl over here. And there it is. What do you think about number two? On to number three. I have some vintage little pie, whatever these are, jello molds, a little tree, I've got some paint and a brush, I've got some salt and magic snow mix, some tinsel, some wraps, a snowflake, a little piece of the fabric cotton, and then some pom-poms, and I'm also going to use some table scatter like we had before. I'm going to start off by emptying this into a pan and getting my paint and I'm going to take this stiff brush it's like a stencil brush and I'm going to put this all down over the branches of this tree doing it with this type of brush is going to the little needles from the tree poke straight up into there and you get a lot better coverage you're going to save yourself a ton of time plus you get all the way down to the base of the tree while it is still wet you want to take your Whatever you want to use, if you want to use just faux snow, you can do that. But I like to mix 
part salt and part um, faux snow together to get this look. Plus it gives it a little sparkle. And then there you go. After it dries, you're going to spray a little clear Mod Podge on it and that's going to help keep it from falling off. Let it dry. Now we're going to stack these two, make a little stand or a little base. I have some more that are smaller and I, for the love of, I don't know, I can't find them. I don't know where they're at. Probably in the Valentine stuff because I do a lot of Victorian at Valentine's. All right, while the glue is still wet here, I'm going to take some of that same mixture and go around the joint in the middle. Just like that. Why, you may ask, because in the beginning, I thought I was going to leave it that way, but I do change it. So I'm going to take some of this fabric, snow, whatever this stuff is, batting. You can use pillow fluff. You can use whatever you want. And I'm going to stick it down into here. I'm going to use some hot glue and then press it down so that it is pretty much level with the top. Then I'm going to be sure you're in a ventilated area when you do this now. I have the door open and a fan on. Don't worry. And you're just going to pack this onto here. It's going to be like an adhesive. It's a sealer, but it's also an adhesive. And it works really well for this because the hot glue is not going to give you even coverage. You'll have little streaks and roads. And this will give you a nice, the ability to make an even coverage. So give that a minute, let it dry. And then I'm going to add a little border around the top. So I'm using this silver tinsel, which I guess I could have used the silver tinsel around that Santa Claus ornament too. Hindsight, right? Okay, so I'm making a little border on the top. Just tack it down with a little bit of hot glue. A couple of spots all the way around it, and it'll stay. And see, I just add a little and then just press it down. And there you go. So, now we got to put the tree down in the base. We're going to decorate it first, apparently. We're going to take some white pom-poms, and this is from a bag I think I got at Dollar Tree. I think is what it said. And I'm just going to add some white, the smallest ones, straight into the tree. They will stay if you just poke them in there. Just like that. You can leave it like that if you would like. And just have the white. Or, because it's Victorian, I'm going to add a little something to it. Let's go ahead and secure the tree down into the base. So I'm just making a little hole, like a little nest right there with my fingers so that I can put the tree right down in it. I left the base on the tree because that's going to help it be a little more stable down in that snow. I have a stray snowball and we'll leave it. We're going to go with it. So in order to not burn myself, I'm using my tiny jewelry pliers. I'm going to put my little silver scatter here, put a drop of hot glue on it and just press it into the tree here and there all over. When you're finished, this is the look. Now I'm just going to add a the bigger, a few of the little bigger snowball looking things in the bottom, the little pom poms. And so far, this is what we have. But you know, with these types of decorations, you're going to have to add a little bit more. Like I said, when you think you've gone far enough, add in a little bit more. So I'm going to add this around the middle because I want to add the star and that star would not have stuck on there without it. So that's why I wrapped it in the middle. And this is what we have so far. And I just put a little one of those um, table scatters right in the center. All right, I'm going to show you how to make a tiny star. We're going to use a piece of this pipe cleaner. I called it tinsel, I think. And you're going to do it, you're going to bend it just like you would when you draw a star so simple then I'm pinching it with my fingers until I get it in the shape that it needs to be and then I'm going to put some glue on the bottom part so that the point is upward and glue it to the tree so this one's all silver silver and white you could add gold if you wanted okay so on to the next one we're gonna use this beautiful little sign that I got from a thrift store this is a little I don't know it's a little wooden piece that I got. It looks like a, a headboard for a bed or something. If you don't have that, you can use a piece of thin wood like the size of a ruler and some of these little clothespins and make your own. There you go. See that? Yes. Okay, so then I'm going to take some of this old ribbon that I have and again with the pick, I have this beautiful little dove. I believe it's a dove. And we're going to have some table scatter as well. I'm going to start off by covering up the bottom where it says tulip soap. 
because the ribbon that I'm going to use is somewhat sheer and I don't want those words to show through there. So I'm just going along the natural border underneath her little, her little muffler, her coat, and just going along the bottom. And then after it's dry, I'm going to overlay it with two different ribbons. This one is a little sheer. It looks a little more opaque, but uh, I assure you that it is fairly sheer. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom. It's going to cover up that whole bottom section. And then, just like that, trim off anything that you need to trim off. And then I'm looking at what I want to do with this ribbon because I, I like the imprint or the embossing on the edge of this. So I know I want to use it in the project, but it's too big. So I'm going to put it on my, on my mat and use my little rotary cutter and just go right up the middle cutting it in half. Now when I do that, I still get that border and the sheer part just overlays it, just gives it a little something extra, and I like it. We're going to glue that on and then for the top, I don't have as much room up there so I'm just going to cut the rest of the ribbon part off, keep the trim, and we're going to add that metal trim up on the top. And it is like a like a metal. I, I don't know how to actually explain it, but it, it is sort of like a metal. So now we have the top. Now I'm just holding it in the place that I know it's going to be in the middle of my little frame there. And then pushing it right back down, standing it up to make sure that it's going to be able to stand on the bottom. To give a little more support, you can use these little jingle blocks or these tower blocks that come from Dollar Tree. And in order to get mine to stand up correctly, I'm just going to stand it up and put the blocks on that way. So I know it's balanced. All right, so we're gonna go to these little fence posts because that's what they look like now and add some greenery. What a beautiful little girl. Isn't that a pretty image? She's so pretty. Those little chubby pink cheeks. It's just a beautiful picture. All right, so don't be afraid to cut down your picks and your florals. You can cut them down. It came from the Dollar Tree. You can really stretch your dollar by getting the pieces that you want by just kind of working on them on your own. So there we go. Now I know on the top, I want that little bird to be up there, but she needs something to sit on so she's not just looking strange up there. So we're gonna put her on a nest. Look at that. I love this piece. I should have been protecting my fingers, but I was just trying to be careful. So you be super careful and use your protectors where you need to. Okay, so we're going to add here and there and here and there. Y'all be sure to check out the links in the description box and go check out everybody's video. These are a great bunch of women. I've known them for a while now. They're super sweet, super talented. And I know that they would love for you to go over there and check them out. And if you're coming from my channel to see them, please tell them that Brandy sent you. And you'll be doing me and the world a big favor. Now I'm going to make a bow with this little metal stuff. I wasn't sure where I was going at first. I didn't know for sure if it would work, but it worked. Where there's a will, there's a way. Just like my goal to get to 10,000 subscribers. If there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to do it, and I'd love for you to be part of it by subscribing to this channel and following the journey. All right, so I'm just twisting this in the middle with some floral wire. Then I'm going to very carefully pull out the middles of those ribbons. It's kind of hard to do because it's super small, but it works. You could always use tweezers or some pliers to help you with that if you needed to, or you could do something on a larger scale, depending on your picture, what you want to put. Something I've noticed about this style of decoration is that they do a lot of 3D on the people themselves. So, you know, like you'll, the little hat will be 3D or it'll be a photograph of a face, but then the body is dimensional. So I thought, well, why don't we do that with her and just give her a bow that stands out in her picture? And I think this worked really well. So I'm just going to cut one of those little table scatter um, balls in half and then put it right in the center. It's gonna cover up that wire and it's gonna give a little more adornment to her beautiful little bow. Would you have used the metal? Would you have thought to cut down a ribbon like that to just dissect it and use it in different parts? Gotta stretch your imagination a little bit. Look at all those elements and see what would work best for you 
and what you really like. And kind of test yourself, push your limits. So here's our sweet little girl. And there's our Santa star. The little kids, Kuro, Kurio. <laughs> Love it. So you a gold person or silver person? I'm on the fence. I think I'm on the fence. It depends on what we're talking about, I believe. The first project is a Victorian wreath. We're going to start off with one of these vine, grapevine wreaths. This is about 17 or 18 by 14, so it's oval. Then I have some of these beautiful poinsettia picks from Dollar Tree, two different kinds in three bunches. And I have two of these tubes of ornaments in two different sizes, and we have like a rose gold and a gold. These are a set of bells that I got from the thrift store. Then we have some glitter paint, some rose gold paint, and a sponge brush, a variety of old ribbons and new, whatever you have on hand. We're going to start by clipping off all of our flowers. Leave enough stem there that we can attach these down into the wreath. Now let me show you how you can make these pitiful looking flowers much more substantial. We're going to put two together. So we're going to pull one off and this is me trying to discover how to get the centerpiece off. It's just easiest to cut it and then the little seed part just pops right out. And then we have four leaves here. I'm going to take the stem from another flower, feed it right through, put the stem back on, and look at that. So we're going to do the same thing with these, but these have like a little snap sort of situation going on, and it just pops off, but it stays on very securely. So I'm going to take the bees off of this one. Now we just have the two layers of petals. I'm going to take one more of these apart, pull the back off, leave the berries in that one, or the center and then just push those other petals up there. Snap that little back part back on. If I was looking at what I was doing with my glasses, I could have got that first try. Put the stem back on and look at the difference. Isn't that amazing? All right, so I knew that I wanted these bells to be a rose gold color. However, I wasn't exactly sure how the paint would do on this plastic because these are just plastic bells. So I start off with a brush putting the paint on and it just barely makes any coverage. I just I go ahead though and do all three of them but then I go back in with one of these brushes and I'm just kind of pouncing in it and just offloading and just dotting it all over the bells. And y'all the texture that this makes is beautiful. It looks like old bells are old and, and rusted and aged. It looks perfect for the Victorian style, so I really hope that you try this. Now I've got some fern picks from Dollar Tree, and these are in gold, and then I'm not sure where these came from because I thrifted these, and they're just uh, some type of a pine, I guess, since they have pine cones. We're going to take the fern picks apart, just cut them down where we have enough stem to work with, and leave these greenery pieces whole. Now for my wreath, I'm going to start on the bottom and just push this into the grapevine wreath, you know, the stem part of it. And then for a change, rather than using floral wire here, I'm going to use some zip ties to show you that you can do things many different ways and it's just not wrong. Just however you can get these on here, you can put them on here. If you don't have a zip tie, if you don't have floral wire, you can always hot glue them, although I'm not sure how long it would last that way. Um, or you could use pipe cleaners, you know, whatever you want to use here. You could use some jute cord, whatever you have. It's no excuse to stop once we've gotten started, right? Right, so we're going to move along with the other two picks, and these are kind of going to go upward. I'm going to start with the higher one, and it's going to kind of go toward the top center, as you can see here. It's going to wrap around this way. And it is not going in the same direction as the bottom piece. I'm going to secure it down with a zip tie. And then I'm going to grab another one, put a little bend in its stem too, and just put it right underneath the one we just put in. 
It's going to leave a little gap in the middle for us to add a bow at a later time. Very easy. Zip tie, snug it down on there and any pieces that need a little securing, go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to start adding this beautiful gold fern. I chose the greenery that I'm using here because it has sort of a bluish gray tint and I thought it would give a really pretty contrast with all of the warm from the gold and it I think it will look nice with the pink too that cool color and the pink is actually I guess it's more of a mauve type color I'm not really sure you could maybe call it rose gold I mean what do you think you'll see when you get a closer look at those ornaments you tell me what color you think it is because I'm really not sure what to call it so I'm going to move these pieces around in the greenery, just some sticking out, some on top, just kind of thread them around through each other and fluff them where they need to be fluffed. Just spread it out a little bit so it looks like it belongs there. And I'm going to continue around with this. And I decided that one more piece right here would be pretty. Just a kind of little flyaway, a little extra up there. And this is how it looks so far once we've got our greenery on, our greenery and goldery. And now these now lush poinsettias that we put together, we can start adding these. If you don't have poinsettias from the Dollar Tree, that's fine. You can get them on at Hobby Lobby right now, I think for 60% off. They're, it's very economical. And I've heard that Walmart has some beautiful greenery picks um, out this year too. So you might want to check that out. We always want to keep it budget friendly on this channel, right? That's how we do it here. We want to do different things and we want to keep it budget friendly. So I'm continuing around with the two different types of poinsettias looking good so far. You can watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 Central Standard Time and it is free. Now I'm going to move on to these beautiful ribbons that I found. These I got from the thrift store. They have staples in them. That's really weird. So be careful with that. We're going to make a bow. I'm going to use my own little bow maker tool here. Didn't copy anybody. I'm very appreciative of the original creator of this. Um, mine is not exactly the same so I'm not putting anybody out of their, their royalties or anything. Just making something that I can afford, right? And you know how to make a bow. You've seen me do this bow before. This is not a difficult bow. And the fabric in these bows, well, in this ribbon is wonderful. It's old, but the texture is so different than anything I've felt before. It's like a, it's a stiffer, papery, yet still fabric type, I don't know. And this is like a, a velvety feeling ribbon and it's got the glittery polka dots on it, so pretty. We're gonna do two loops on each side and they are going to be six inch loops with 18 inch tails. So you saw me first put the 18 inch tail out there and then make two sets of loops like this. Then I'm gonna pull that other tail down, make sure we get them about the same length, doesn't have to be perfect, snip it off. Okay, now leaving that bow on the bow maker, I am going to go ahead and add on my next ribbon. This one is a stunner. This ribbon is absolutely beautiful. It has poinsettias on it. It is silver and gold. And it's also that really interesting feel. It's almost, I don't know, is taffeta the right word for it? I don't know, it's really different. It is wired, both of these are wired ribbon. So it's the same process as we did with the bow underneath. You see me just kind of fold it in half. That's how I always do my bows so that the bulky part goes in the middle. Squeeze my wire pieces together and then feed it down there and then cut it off. Now I'm just gonna take a piece of cotton twine and you can certainly use whatever you have here for this because it won't show in the end. So go ahead and use a pipe cleaner or a zip tie, whatever you're more comfortable with because we will be covering up the center. And then add a couple of knots, snip it off, get all that excess out of the way, and then you can start looking at your bow and fluffing it out. 
I love the combination of these two bows together. Now the bow on the bottom has the six inch loops. The bow on the top, I don't think I said, it has five inch loops. So it's a little bit smaller, the one in the front, but the tails are about the same length. You see how this material just stands up so, I don't know, it's wonderful. I wish that we could find Dollar Tree ribbons of this quality. So pretty. We're gonna dovetail the ends, or you can cut them at a slant, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm trying to put a really steep cut there, just to make it a little different. I'm gonna take a thin piece of floor wire, go through my little center here where we tied it. You could always do this before you tie the center up, but I almost always forget. So this is an easy way to kinda make it look like you did it on purpose. I meant to do that. So put it down in the center of where those greenery pieces meet. And I'm just gonna take the wire around the back and twist it and fold it tightly and tuck it into the wreath so it doesn't poke any fingers. This is how we're looking so far. Really like it. So now here are those ornaments and there's that pinkish color I was talking about. I'm gonna add some hot glue to hold these little tops on because they pretty much snap on, but when you are using, when you're bundling these together and putting pressure on them, they have a tendency to pop off. And I don't want that to happen once I've gotten all that work done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now. Get it over with and I'll do every one of the bundles and we're gonna do three bundles. This is easy. You just feed them through the wire. I'm just gonna do two golds and a pink and then two pinks and a gold, just to kind of alternate them. So one big, two small in each little bundle. Twist them together. See, this would be the part where they would pop off of those little hanger sections if you didn't have them glued on. I'm gonna trim this off and then twist down to sort of make um, like a little more of an area that you can attach it down to the wreath. A little something else to add some glue to. Just twisting it, folding it up, twisting it again, so it almost has like a little stem, which you could feed through the wreath if you chose to do it that way. But they'll be nice and tight in there. Then you're gonna add some hot glue to your wire, to the ornaments, wherever it needs to be added so that it stays in the very center of your bow. And to me, y'all, that is pretty. Those colors are so gorgeous together, don't you think? I think that the pastels and the wine colors, they're all colors that look really good in a Victorian style um, home or decor. And I'm just gonna add three sets. So one on the top, one in the bow, and then one is going to be in the bottom. Just trying to get an idea of where I'm at. Once the bell has dried, I'm going to take this beautiful um, older looking gold, it's like a brushed gold, I think is what it's called. A tiny little foam brush, and I'm gonna go all over the clapper, or that little round part of the bell, and the bottom of the bell. You can see me patting that on. I'm trying to do this all the way up to the edge of where the pink starts, or the rose gold starts. And I'm gonna go up and down all the way over until every bit of that bright shiny silver that was on there is covered up. And you just have to be patient with this because it does take two coats to cover it, um, you know, to be thick enough to really cover it. So this is what it looks like with one. Right there. And then you'll do each one of those, let them dry and do one more coat. And then I'm gonna choose my placement where I want these bells to be on this wreath. Initially, I thought I would hang them right down in the middle, but for balance sake, I think it looks better off to the side. So this is where I've decided to place it. To give it a little more support and something to attach the bells a little more securely to the wreath, I'm just using a piece of a popsicle stick that I broke off or a crab stiff stick. <laughs> and I am going to give it like a little base there. That'll be where we put our glue. Right through the top, there's a couple of holes, so I'm taking another piece of that wire, the floral wire, feeding it through there, and that's how I'm going to attach the top part of it to the wreath. You can feed it through the wreath into the back, or really the easiest, most non-frustrating way to do it is just to wrap it all the way around, 
twist it up, and it's so thin you're not going to be able to see it. Adding hot glue on that craft stick back there and pressing it down, and then underneath the base, if there's any areas that you can see or touching, you can go ahead and put it there too. I'm going to add another piece of fern just to cover up my little top there. And this is what we have. I've done a lot of research on vintage and Victorian, and this is my idea. This is my representation of what a Victorian wreath would look like. Do you like it? If you do, a thumbs up would be much appreciated, and it will let me know that I am on the right track. It is Subscriber Appreciation Month all November, and I want to say thank you by giving back. So I want you to pause this, take a screenshot, read the rules, do what you got to do, and good luck. The next is our angelic choir. So I've got two of these little trees. I've got some more of that shimmer glitter spray, some vintage little angels, and they're having instruments. Look, one of them's playing the bass. They're from Hong Kong. And then we have a flute and a clarinet, I believe. This is a spoon rest. Wherever Room Essentials comes from, that's where this came from, but I thrifted it. Automotive cloth from Dollar Tree. We're gonna take the heirloom white satin spray paint and spray paint this. After it is dry with one coat, you're gonna do each side. You're gonna take the handle and spray it with your shimmer spray, or you can use a shimmer glue, or you can use Mod Podge and glitter, or whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna make a platform for the top of this. This is gonna be like a stage for our angel choir. I'm gonna cut out outside of the line just a little bit because I want there to be a lip and you'll see why shortly. Nice and smooth. And it is going to fit perfectly on top of my spoon rest. Using my glue gun, I'm going to add some glue all around the edges. This is hot glue, so you gotta work kind of quickly and be careful with your fingers. I'm gonna place it on top, quickly fold, turn it over, and then just kind of slide it into place. Press it down and let it cool. Then we're gonna to have to cover our stage. So I'm just using a pen and I'm going outside, putting some little guide dots on this automotive cloth so that I have enough to overlap onto the stage part and onto the bottom part. Make it nice and neat. This is not the easiest stuff to cut and I have sharp scissors, so just be patient. Protect your fingers. We should all have these finger protectors by now. Then I'm going to add glue on my cardboard section and just squish up the sides. You gotta keep it laying flat so that it doesn't slide around and just do this all the way over. It's gonna completely cover the little platform and it's going to overlap onto the bottom of the spoon rest all the way around and you're gonna push upward and close your little gap there hopefully you won't have any little black marks showing in the end you can't see them but just be careful with that here are our beautiful little angels I want to show you the difference see I had two of the same ones one of them was broken so I experimented on her she's missing her little bow and I really like the way it looks covered. If you don't want to do this and you like the aged patina, by all means, leave it exactly like that. But for me, I wanted this to be a little more, mm, a little more gilded. I guess that's, that's, that's the word I'm going to go with. We're going to gild them. That's what we're doing. So I'm going to do each one of these like this, and I'm just kind of offloading the paint and just tapping that all over. I don't want a bunch of gloppy paint settling down in all of the cracks. I just want it to be pretty and shimmery and rich. It makes a big difference. So whatever's left on the brush, I'm just gonna go over the handle of the spoon rest. Now we're gonna start putting our stage together. We'll start by adding the trees making sure that when I put the trees down on here that I'm not taking up too much space and that our angels still have room to be there. You're probably not, well, you're most likely not gonna have this exact same spoon rest, but you could do this with a Dollar Tree spoon rest probably. 
I don't know if they have a lip around the edge or not, but it might work. And you could certainly do this with the top of a teacup. That would be really gorgeous, but I didn't have one, so this is what we're using. But it almost looks like a stage, right? Like they would walk up the stage and take their places. Once those angels are dry, we're gonna start putting those down on the stage. I'm gonna hold it for a minute and press down a little bit so that the glue goes through that fabric onto the cardboard and really locks it into place. I don't want anything flopping around. So, so far, this is how it looks. So pretty. Now we're going to embellish the stage. So I've got some of this old ribbon or trim. I don't know if you, which way, you, what, what would you call this? Trim, ribbon? I've always referred to it as ribbon, but we're gonna trim out the stage with it. So there you go. It's very luxe looking to me with that old gold and the gold in that ribbon or trim is about the same color that is in our angels. So it's perfect and it looks rich and it looks regal and it looks Victorian to me. I'm gonna add this all the way around my edge. It doesn't take a lot of glue because the fabrics cling to each other quite well. I'm just gonna pat it down until we're all the way around back to the handle of the spoon rest. You can cut that off. And in the shape or the design of this ribbon, it's got little, if you don't cut it in a certain way, it will have little pieces that stick out because they're kind of sewn together. So I'm trying to watch where the stitches are and cut around them so that I still have that really pretty shape without anything fraying. And I do go back over the other side and correct that side too. Now I'm gonna make a bow. Of course, I'm making a bow. With that same beautiful peach and gold. It's just a regular little awareness sign bow. Very simple. And it looks like a layered bow because of the two different textures that are on this one piece. I'm gonna give it a couple of knots in the back and then trim off. I just used a little bit of jute. It really kind of blends in because the, the ribbon there is very busy, but you can use whatever you like to close it. I've got this beautiful rhinestone from some fake jewelry, and I'm gonna add it in the center of the bow. Now look at that richness. All right, so Dollar Tree sells these little sheets of pearl looking stickers. I'm just cutting out the sections that I need and I will need a section and a half. You can peel the backing off just like that and then start laying that down. I'm going to go right over the top, right trying to center it in the peach section. So in that little colored section so that you can still see it. This these little pearls, the little tape in the back is transparent so you can still see the color underneath. It really just looks like a row of beads on there. You don't even notice the back. Then I'll cut another little section because it wasn't long enough to go all the way around and then trim that off once I get back to the handle. Nice and neatly. This is it so far. Feel free to stop whenever you wanna stop. But you know me. I pull the tops off of some of those ferns. They almost have like a little tree seed pod looking thing on the top. I thought they would be perfect trees to add to the stage. So we have our natural trees on there and we're gonna add some of these golden trees. I've got some little pearl beads. Do not know where they came from, but you certainly can get those at Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna add a little hot glue and then go into both of these trees. If you don't use glue, they will pop straight out. That's how it will look on the one tree. And then I have some of these that I got from the thrift store. They're tiny stars, but they don't have, I don't think these have holes. No, they don't. So they're not beads, but there's just some type of an embellishment. But again, the color is perfect. It matches perfectly with the other gold that we have going on here. And I'm not a big gold girl, but this aged gold, I am loving this. It's something so warm about it. Isn't that sweet? Our little angelic choir. 
If you love these ladies as much as I do, please give me a thumbs up. It tells YouTube that my videos are quality and that you're enjoying it so I can give you more material. Next is our Victorian ornament. Okay, so here is a pink ornament or a mauve, whatever you want to call it. We can use any type of sticker ribbon. You can use adhesive pearl wrap. I've got some of that gold greenery. Here are some more of these pieces that I have. And these are just random things I pick up at, at Goodwill when I see it. I thought any of these would be pretty. Here is some beautiful purple and gold. Some more of that ribbon. We're gonna start by taking the top off and it just pops right off. I'm gonna choose a couple more ribbons that will coordinate. Using that same gold, I'm gonna go over the top and just do the same thing that we did on the bottom of the bells. And then once it is completely done, I only put one coat on here. It seems to have taken the paint pretty well. Now set it aside to dry. And then we're gonna do a quick little measurement around the ball to see how long we need our ribbons to be. Just gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna leave about half an inch extra over like that. So we know how much we need. And now that will be our guide to cut the rest of our ribbons. I'm going to do two of each one and two of this cord, this gold cord that I have. Now I'm just looking to see which one I would like to lay down first. And I think that the pink and white here would be good. This is not old ribbon. This one, I think I got on clearance at Walmart um, after the spring or summertime. But I think that it is appropriate for this because the colors match very closely and the gold is just pretty. It's just pretty on there. And it gives a little bit of something extra. It's got that, um, the leafy look. So going all the way around, we're going to, please protect your fingers for this because you're using, you're gonna be touching this a lot. So protect yourself. So we've gone around the center now. Now we're gonna just go across the other way like dividing this into sections. Then you can add tiny amounts of glue here and there, especially when you cross over another piece of ribbon, that's a good place to put more glue. But you can certainly put it on the ball. Just be careful that you don't make a mess. I'm not sure if the paint would peel off if you had an accidental boo-boo with the glue here. I'm not sure how that would work. So just be on the safe side. Try to use as little glue as possible and make sure that you're looking before you do it. Do you see, I'm looking right between the center of these two white ribbons and I know that's where this beautiful um, lavender, mauve, rose gold color will go. Right across the center section in the middle. I wanna keep these sections as symmetrical as possible and as neat as I can make it. This ornament was fun to do. This ornament could make me do Victorian Christmas in my home. And you know me, I'm rustic, traditional, used to do the farmhouse thing, um, definitely love the outdoors type woodland stuff, but there's something so precious about this. I hope that this ornament can find its way to a good home because this thing took a lot of work, but it was worth it. And I've sped it up for you, but I didn't want to cut all this out because I feel like sometimes when we're doing something that takes a lot of time, we start questioning ourselves saying, oh my gosh, what, am I doing this wrong? Am I putting this in the wrong spot? Am I, what, how did she say to do it? So I'm leaving it in here so that you can see it. You see, I'm dividing each section that is made by another section. So now we've got the gold on here, and you notice the gold is a different texture. The gold is not old either. I'm not even sure where I got it, probably thrifting, because I very rarely ever buy anything unless it's on clearance or if I thrift it, or get it at Dollar Tree, of course. 
And you might could find something like this at Dollar Tree. Heck, I might have got it from Dollar Tree. They have a ton of ribbon right now at Dollar Tree, at least in my Dollar Trees in Alabama. Lots and lots of ribbon and trim. You just got to be careful and don't get too excited about it because the quality is not there for all of it. So after I've got all the ribbons down, I'm going to add my cording to this all the way around, cross over. At this point, if you wanted to add a tassel on the bottom, you probably could do that. But I wanted to keep my ornament busy in a different way, and you'll see what I do. So far, this is how it looks. You could always pop that top back on with some hot glue and be done, but I'm not done. I've got some of this beautiful tinsely like sparkly ribbon and it looks really good although you can't tell right now but bear with me it's going to get better in just a minute it's trying to focus on the ornament instead of what i'm doing down there i am going to flip that purple ribbon over add some glue to it flip that other tinsely looking ribbon right over the top of it this was just a random piece that i got from the thrift store Continue all along until you've got one piece that looks like one ribbon that looks like it was made this way. It's very pretty. Look at this. Look how that turned out. Doesn't that look like one beautiful, expensive ribbon? It's going to wrap around the center of the ornament. So what you want to do is start getting an idea of where the center is going to be. Kind of hold it in place. Put some glue on one of the ribbon sections. Doesn't matter which one. Then you're going to overlap that right back onto itself. So you're going to press that down there. And it is kind of fuzzy and crazy right now, but I'll clean it up. Don't worry. And so this is what it looks like around the center. Go ahead at this time and add a little more glue here and there so that this belt that goes around it or this section does not slide up and down your ornament. We don't want this to look cheap. We want this to look like we took the time that we actually took to do it. I'm going to trim off any little fuzzies and extras that might be in the way. And we're going to start working on this side. So we're going to cover this up with a little, I don't know if this is like a little crocheted piece. I, I don't know. I don't know about needlework or that type of thing. So feel free to tell me what this is if this is not crochet, if it's knitted. Um, but these pieces came from the thrift store. And I knew I wanted to use them in a project. So before anybody gets mad at me, it would have been in the landfill. And look how beautiful it is now, given new life. Just keep adding that glue. So we're layering, overlapping. Clean up your glue strings. I've chosen this little clip-on earring to go in the center of this doily, which the center of it is actually like a flower. I could have pressed it out, ironed it out, but I just pushed it out a little bit with my hands before I added the glue and then nestled that little jewel cluster right in the center. Now, glam is not my thing. I've never really done glam, but um, yeah, this Victorian is probably as close as I'm going to get to the glam. I'm going to add another piece of that gold ribbon there, add some glue, and overlap it on there so you have a nice, neat ring. Then I'm going to, once it cools, I'm going to feed it back through where it hangs to make a nice, neat top. I'm going to add a swag, of course, to this very regal ornament. Just putting two pieces together so they're going in opposite directions from each other, then hot glue it down. And I noticed a little gap here. I cut a little too much off, so I'm just going to add some back in. Well, that's, that's how I like it. Going to the other side, we're going to add another little swag piece, or just one piece I used on the back. You want it to look good from both sides because it's round and it may turn when you put it on your tree. And you don't want anything nasty on the back. So to make some more of those awareness bows, we're just going to fold it and scrunch it down. And then I'm going to use a clip to hold it in place while we do the rest of the layers. I'm gonna now use the beautiful, it's like a satiny, no, it's not satin, Ophrey, Ophrey? Hmm. I'm gonna layer that on top and then some more. This is just a little bit more of that little crazy piece of ribbon. I really don't know what this stuff is, but it's 
It looks really good, though. Well, in my opinion, it does. I'm not bragging. I hope when y'all hear me say something looks good, it's not me bragging. I try to give God the glory for my skills and my gifts because, you know, that's where it comes from. So being proud of it and, and making something and seeing it come out of my head as it comes you know, come out of my hands as it does in my head, it, it gives me a sense of pride. Um, and not a boastful way, but you know what I mean. I just really love it, and sometimes things come out better than I, I think that it would come out, I guess. I don't know. You know what I mean. You know, if you're a crafter, you know what I'm saying here. There's no vanity in it, in other words. So after the bows are together and tied together, we're going to dovetail my, our ends or cut them at a slant. And then taking some clear school glue, I'm going to go over those, um, that little rope section and just twist it, twist the stick around it in the same direction. You can see what I'm doing here so that the fabric doesn't come unglued and then let it dry. You could do it with hot glue too, but hot glue tends to dry white and I don't want to see that. That doesn't look very nice. I'm going to put this bow on the ribbon section. So on the hanger, it's up a little bit from the ornament, which extends the length of the ornament. And I think it gives it a really pretty, pretty look. Look at that. Can you see these in, oh, on your tree? Oh my goodness, beautiful. Here are our ornaments and our decorations. So there were three. This is our angelic choir, possibly my favorite. Not entirely sure because I like all of these. And I really hope that y'all do. I had so many requests to do Victorian inspired Christmas, um, Victorian decorations, and this is what I came up with. This is my interpretation. If you liked it, if you share it, that will help the channel tremendously. And I appreciate it forever. The first ornament will be a butterfly ornament. So I've got some brushed gold paint and a brush here and I have a little resin butterfly. I'm going to put some of that paint down and then kind of get it up into the bristles but I don't want a lot on here so this is almost going to be sort of like a dry brush technique but you're going to put more paint on there than that. This is almost like you would be using a wax when you use a wax, you know how it looks kind of, you want it to be down in the deeper areas and you want the higher pieces to be a little bit lighter colored. That's kind of the technique I was going for in this. I'm going to push down in all of those little cracks and crevices. I'm gonna go around the edges too to get some good coverage on here. Now you can add as much as you like. You can do a little bit less whichever way you like it. I'm going to take a paper towel and ball it up really, really well to make it soft and squishy. And I'm just going to gently wipe off the higher areas there. So you see how it's down in those cracks and it looks aged. Now my son decided to get in on the action here and to do a little helping. It's usually his sister who is helping me, but he is going to be my assistant for this video. So if you love what he's doing here, you could give him a thumbs up, and I know he would appreciate it. And of course, it helps my channel too. So he's doing the same thing I did. He's a little bit heavier handed than I was, but you'll see it makes a difference. And it's actually helpful here in case you decide you want to do more or less, whichever look you're going for. So now he's got the towel and he's wiping off all the extra. And you can see that my side's a little bit lighter than his, but both sides are perfectly okay. Now the body of the butterfly needs to be painted, so I'm going to do a little bit heavier, leave a little bit more on the body of the butterfly. Be sure that you go around all your sides. Now, maybe you don't have one of these butterflies, then what do you do? Well, Dollar Tree has paper butterflies in green, in yellow, in orange, in hot pink. 
they have a variety. It doesn't have to be something that's plastic or resin. This is just what I had on hand, so this is what I wanted to use. Now this is a, it's a little paper Christmas ornament, but it's more of a cardboard type thickness. And I'm using some trim here just to go around the edge. Now this is the back side. Both sides of this little ornament are exactly the same, but I'm going to put this on the back side so that it will be trim when we flip it over for the front. I'm gonna go along the curves and contours of this little ornament. And this is how it'll look on the front. I'm gonna go all the way around, except where her little legs and feet are. So it's gonna go all the way around the edges of her dress and of her body, and then can be trimmed off. You could use tinsel or whatever you have for this, and you can use a cutout. So now this little angel will be right in the middle of the butterfly. Almost like she has two layers of wings. Little hot glue will hold this angel down to the body of the butterfly. So actually I didn't have to paint it at all if I didn't want to. Could have saved my paint. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of gold cord and go right on the back of the angel ornament so that we have a hanger. Now, if you do have one of these little resin pieces, you can find, I find these all the time. Hummingbirds and swallows and ducks. I find them all the time at the Goodwill store. If you have one and you wanna take the screw off where it attaches to the wall, you can go ahead and do that. Mine wasn't on hand, so I left it. This is how she is going to look. What else do you think you could use on the back of this ornament for the same kind of look? The next ornament is going to be a topper ornament. Now I named it a topper because this is a candle topper. I have a variety here, and if you don't have these, this little blossom sign from Dollar Tree is exactly the same size. I'm gonna use this one. If you're gonna use it and it's been on a candle, get all the wax off, clean it up really good, both sides. I have a little piece of, this is scrapbook paper actually and it's in a little pad. You can get these at Michael's and Hobby Lobby. I think you could get them at Target too. Mine was thrifted. I'm going to cut it out to the right size for the bigger diameter circle because this is going to be a two-sided ornament. I love to use my glue stick for these kind of projects. It, it dries quickly, it grips quickly. It's just easy to work with. Then I'm gonna take my squeegee after I push it down with my hands and just work from the inside outward. Then we're gonna flip it over and on the back side, I'm going to brush some of that gold on there and putting this gold over the dark wood is going to make it almost look like a bronzed color and I really like the way it turned out when it was dry. I'm gonna take some gold ribbon and go right around the edge. It's a, it's a little bit thicker than the thickness of that part of the candle topper but you know it'll work and if you are using one of those Dollar Tree pieces little um, springtime ornaments which they're in the garden section if I didn't mention that you don't have to worry about that you can just go around the entire outside edge with this if you would like any type of trim you want I think the gold is good for Victorian so that's why I used it and this is a gold that's very similar to the gold paint that I've been using for my Victorian decorations. So I think it works well. Now I'm gonna use an emery board here. I got mine at Dollar Tree. You can use a sanding block or a piece of sand paper or a finger sander and just go ahead and shear off the edges so you get a nice clean finished look. Then it will just peel away. Now this I got thrifting. I think maybe it was a candy box, maybe. What do you think this was? I'm thinking maybe it had candy in it. I'm going to cut out the figure of the little girl. I think she is so precious. And I will use her on this side of the ornament. She's holding her dolly. She's got little bare feet. She's so cute. And I'm just gonna add her down on this side. And I'm gonna add greenery because you know I always do. And I love this piece. They, there's just some scraps that I've had left from my Christmas and winter decor from a couple of years. 
I always save that stuff in a bag and it works great on these smaller projects. I'll hold it down in a hot glue then I'm going to use a shorter one right here so that we have like a semicircle on this side and then we can use little beads and or push pins or um, whatever you have as little ornaments here if you have little crystals or little rhinestones you could use those if you wanted to but I think these little pearl beads work great and I know that you can get pearl beads at the Dollar Tree in Crafter Square so I have a little gold looking ball ornament uh, it was in a pick a floral pick and I'm just gonna cut one side off so that I can glue this flat and it won't be quite as thick I don't want anything to overwhelm the piece so I'm just gonna glue that in the middle and then I decided to add maybe just a few more of those little pearls now we're gonna flip it over down the back side this was also in a paper pack I'm gonna trim off a couple of these tags one of them has sheet music on it and the other one just has some Christmas verbiage on it I will cut those out to the right dimensions cut all the white off if you want to put a little staple or something or a little tack in here which I originally thought maybe I would do you can use a stick or a piece of wire and make a hole in the center so you can go through both of them but I just decided to not do it that way for one reason the candle lid was very very hard so I couldn't push a thumbtack through it so I decided to just glue it down like this instead and then make it look as though it is tacked down I want to put a little bend in my papers for a little dimension and interest and I think it looks cute there and since we had ornaments well since I had ornaments left over that were kind of old looking and the same sort of gold look I thought they would look really good on here with the sheet music so I'm just going to add the little harps and the violin to the ornament just on the side there I could have gone completely nuts and y'all know I know I've been accused of going overboard and just doing way too much before but I don't think it's too much on here I think it's interesting and it's different I like it so now it needs a hanger I'm gonna take another piece of the gold ribbon that we use to frame it out on the edges and I'm just going to loop it over and make a little knot right in the end and that is going to be our hanger I'm trying to slide that knot down as far as I can leaving a little bit of slack so that I have something to glue to the trim I'm making sure that this is exactly opposite of the front so that nothing's crooked when it's hanging up on either side adding it with some hot glue and then I'll add a little more hot glue so that I can put a bow on this side I did it upside down but it won't be upside down so this is how it's going to look on the front and then if you flip it over this is how it will look on the back the next ornament is a spool ornament I do have some vintage spools but I do not know where I put them at this particular moment because I have all my Christmas crafting supplies out so take a spool some paper cutouts some rhinestones some ribbons whatever you have and something that looks like a little Christmas tree you can use the little bottle brush Christmas trees if you want to I'm gonna take a little of this satin ribbon from Dollar Tree just get my measurements on there and then I'm going to hot glue the center of it I've seen lots of these little ornament trees on Pinterest so if you're curious um, maybe you don't like the way I did mine or you want more ideas then you can go to Pinterest and look that up you can find my Pinterest board in the description box in case you want to go over there and look lots of good ideas over there for you so now we got that glued down and I'm going to take some of this red and gold and go upside down right over the top same process here we're going to add a little bit of glue but I want to add the glue only where the red is on that ribbon so that it doesn't squish out and make a big mess I'm gonna trim it down make it nice and neat and so this will be the base of our little Christmas tree and ornament so on these picks from Dollar Tree the ends of them have little they look like little trees so I thought that'd be a great idea for a tree and I've used it in other decorations for my other Victorian decorations as well so you just got some versatility from those fern picks 
I'm taking two little signs, a little pick left over from, I believe, some florals that I had. I'm going to first glue down the stick in here. I roll it over into the glue. Then I'm going to add some more glue and glue them together. Now the way I cut these out was exactly how they were on the paper, but I have to trim the wider one down. That's easy enough to do. Could have done it in the beginning, but you can always do it after you have it glued together. So I pressed it down so that it kind of locked it in and that stick's not going anywhere. And this is how it looks on both sides. I'll trim that off on the back of the other one so that they are the same size. Got a little Victorian lady there. These little beads or whatever this is, sticker beads, I think they came from Dollar Tree. I know you can get something similar at Michael's or Dollar Tree, so just watch your sales, get your best discounts where you can, save you a little money when you can. And then just decided to put this one on the top and the other one is on the bottom. It's just a matter of preference. If you don't like the way I do it, all you have to do is change it up. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to give you ideas and then you can make it your own. So far, this is how the spool is looking. I think it is very cute. I am going to add a chrysanthemum right on the top. And then I need to add a little something on the back because if it rotates on the tree, which it may, we need to have it looking nice. So I'm gonna make a little shepherd's hook here, which is also gonna be the hanger. This is a copper looking piece of wire. I'm just gonna bend over the top part of it. And then I'll take some table scatter from Dollar Tree. And I will add on some of these little styrofoam table scatter pieces. So I have a gold, a white, and a silver. And that's how it looks. Pretty simple. You can do it so many different ways. It will hang nicely from that little hook. The next ornament is going to be a card ornament. Recently on a live video with my friends Crafting Cousins and Annie from Indiana Jones Crafts, we had um, we made some ornaments, and so I wanted to duplicate the duplicate sort of the ornament that I did so that you guys could see it and that you can make one of your own. So you can see the supplies so far that I've gathered together. I've got a card here. I'm just going to kind of uh, press that center down and peel it apart. Now I have one. I'm going to use my glue stick, flip it over on top of my foam board, but you can use cardstock or something else if you want. It needs to be fairly thick though if you're gonna put a trim or a border on it. You gotta have something to glue to. I'm just going to place it down, press it down with my hands, and don't worry about that purple glue. It vanishes when it dries, so no worries about that. Doesn't make a mess at all. I'm going to press it down so it is nice and neat with no wrinkles, no bubbles, and so that it will look like we bought it this way. Now you're welcome to use scissors on cardstock, and it works pretty easy, but if you use something like this, like this thick foam board, it's going to work better, in my opinion, if you use a utility knife. You gotta be super careful. I don't use a wooden ruler here, I use only the metal. And keep your fingers out of the way as far as you can. I'm gonna go around the edges, protecting my card until I get it all cut out, and now it is a solid piece, which allows us some room to add on some decorative trim. Now this trim is not a rope. Somebody told me that you don't use rope in Victorian decor, and this is not rope, this is a cord. So I'm going to use this green, red, and gold cord along the edges. I think it looks very rich and regal. And I'm gonna use it all the way around to trim it out. It'll sit right down between the layers of paper because right in between is like a um, styrofoam or something. And so it sits in there nicely. Once you get to the end, if you're using this type of cording, you can just twist it with your fingers to lock the layers together and press it down. That'll give you a nice, nice little finish. Then, before we start the back side of this card, which is reversible, we're gonna add some ribbon with some hot glue. 
let it dry and cool. Then we're going to flip it back over and continue with the front side. I want to add some of these snowy picks. It's the same little snowy pick um, that we used for the other ornament. And I'm going to add it to the card because the cardinal here is sitting in a, a tree, in a pine tree with pine cones and lots of snow. So I thought it was appropriate. I'm also going to add some gold by clipping off pieces of that fern and putting it here and there. Can you see how making these ornaments can just really help you use up those scraps? I mean, I'm just picking apart pieces here and putting them together. Simple. It brings in the gold from the, the frame around the outside and it looks great. So now you can take another piece of paper. I dropped my glue stick. I have no idea where it rolled, but it is gone. So I'm using some double stick tape. This will just give you an option of another way that you can do it if you don't have a glue stick because not everybody keeps them on hand, but I have children in my house, so we always have them in hand. Then I'm going to press it down so that the adhesive from the tape is clinging on to that paper. And I think it looks nice. It looks sort of like a postcard. I have some more of these ornaments. These are gold, and I found these at the same time that I found the angels from my other Victorian video. I'm going to cut off the hangers and the little loops there on the top and decide where I want to put these cute little stockings. So these are going to be Santa's boogie shoes. Y'all remember that song? Yep, they're stockings, but these are Santa, Santa's boogie shoes. I'm going to put them on here, make them look like they're dancing or leaping in the air. Then I'll take some of this beautiful red trim you see how easy it is to make that bow? So super simple. A little bit of red twine, and I'm going to put it around the middle because this red will kind of blend in. And you could leave it like this. You could leave the bow like this rather than having to cover up the center, unless you just want to because I do end up covering the center of mine, just FYI. I'm going to pull down the tails and pull up, kind of fluff up the ears or the loops of the bow. I know now where I want to put it, and I'm just going to trim off my sides so that they don't overhang the outside. Adding a little glue, put it in the corner, and it's just a little bit of overhang there, and that is totally okay. Then I'm going to take this little gold button looking thingy and just glue it down on top. Now we have a two-sided ornament, and this is very similar to the one that I made in the live video. It is November Subscriber Appreciation Month, and it's time for me to give back, and I have been, right? Freeze this frame, read the rules, and good luck. So now we are going to do a frame ornament. Now, this one is vellum, and it is just glued to the back of an empty frame. That's all you have to do to it. I'm gonna cut out some ribbon that's 18 inches, but if you don't have this type of frame, you're going to just alter your ribbon to what you are using. All we're going to be doing is making a bow on the front. This is pretty simple. If you don't have little holes in your frame, then you can take a, um, you can just glue it right to the front. Instead of attaching it by the little area here, you can just make your bow and just glue it right on the front. But since there was a space for it, I decided I would leave it there. I want to take just a moment to thank everyone who is subscribed to this channel. Watching, liking, commenting, sharing, all of those good things help show YouTube that I'm doing good work here and that people are enjoying the work that I'm doing. So I appreciate it when you do those things. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's budget friendly all the way on this channel and I am happy that you stopped by. So now we're going to trim the tails up here, get those out of the way a little bit. I'm going to take an angel ornament. This is just one of those paper cardboard type ornaments here. I'm going to cut the hanger off and place her where I want her and then put just a little bit of that hot glue there. Um, for your information, I am using Gorilla Glue on my projects and I have been for a while now trying to put like the tiniest amount so I don't make a mess on this frame and because I can use this frame again if I'm careful with it. Look at here. 
I can just bend that ribbon in the other direction by just gently pulling it against the back of my scissors. That's a good little trick. It doesn't work with all ribbon, but it did, it did work on this one. So you can see through the back of the vellum. So when you put it next to the Christmas tree, you'll see the lights through it. We're gonna make a hanger. And the way I did mine was just to feed it through where the bow was, then double it back on itself with just a tiny bit. I'm just barely smearing any glue on there so I don't burn myself. Then I'm going to twist it back under there and then I'll add a little bit of glue to hold it in place. This is not heavy, by the way. This is not a heavy frame at all. I wanted to add just a little bit something else up here, but if I would have had the right type of a stone, I probably would have put some fake jewels or something there. But I think this is precious. She'd also look good if this was on a stand in front of a candle, I think. Here are the five ornaments that we did. Now these are strictly inspired. I'm showing you my ideas. These are not supposed to be authentic. These are not supposed to be true to the period or anything like that. We have a reversible card ornament, the frame ornament, the topper ornament, which is also reversible, the butterfly, and then we have the spool. So you're really kind of getting seven because here's the back of one of them. I can't even decide which one of these are my favorite but I think they're all really cute, and I think that they would look good on a Victorian tree. What do you think? Do you think these would be okay? Now I'm gonna show you the back of this one. There's Santa's boogie shoes. Thank you so much for stopping by. I believe in you. It's time to get crafty. Go out and find some joy in your day. Bye.